All right, guys, we are live. End of the season is a well, it's actually over, and we're in the playoffs. First week of the playoffs are done. And um, you want to talk about the first week of the playoffs before we jump into um, what happened in regular season? Since, you know, playoffs were today, and I know Howie and Grimm would like to share their thoughts. Yes? Uh, <laughs> sure. Let's pull that up. Hold on. Howie, what happened? My defense just played like garbage all season long, and I couldn't uh, I couldn't contain Worcester. He ran all over me. I think he had like two touchdowns, three touchdowns. No, he uh, he had one touchdown. Oh, you you kind of held him under four points, yeah. four yards per carry. Why did I seem to think that he? Who beat me then? I thought it was Worcester. It was a close game until the end. Grim had the yeah. ball last two minutes of the game and scored that touchdown. Well, it was just, you know, that was that was my season. I couldn't stop him when I needed to. I thought you were going to go farther than that. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Worcester had two receiving touchdowns. That's why. Oh, here it is. Okay. Yes. I knew he had three. I knew he had three touchdowns. For some reason, I thought he rushed for he rushed for. I thought he rushed for two and caught one, but I flipped that. No, Worcester killed me. Uh, we're we're going over your game, Grim. Oh, you're, right, yours right and on. Howie. Yeah, we stopped the run all right, but man, we had no pass rush. Like I texted earlier this morning, my right tackle. Seriously, he injures his groin, and then it says he could still be able to play. All right, well then he gets a penalty. Gives up a fucking sack, uh, and then he fucking gets injured again, injures his groin, says he can stay in the game. Then he gives up two more fucking sacks, gets another penalty. It's like, this guy's fucking killing me. So what happened the last two minutes of the game that you drove down the field? You did 10 plays, 79 yards for a touchdown. That was a killer. Th yeah, I think we converted two fourth downs there. But yeah, I mean... That first interception, I almost shut the fucking game off. I'm like, no, dude, it's the, it's the play, it's the playoffs. Just fucking let's go. And that second interception in the fourth, I, I, I almost did it. I'm almost like, fuck this. I'm not watching the rest of this. And I'm glad I fucking stayed watching because we fucking eked it out there at the end. Yeah. Yeah, I can see you want to turn it off here. That interception in the fourth quarter with five minutes left to go, almost six yep. minutes. <sighs> Brutal. Oh. Yeah, it was bad news. You pulled it off. Um, penalties weren't that bad. Three penalties for you. Oh, 11 penalties for um, Howie. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Howie wow. got smoked on penalties today. That was... If you're not cheating, you're not trying. Yep. <laughs> 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 oh, man. All right. Sure. Nope, but we were both terrible on third downs. And, you know, it was just, I don't know. It was a weird game. It was, but again, uh, we made a game out of it, Howie, and that's really yeah. all I wanted, you know. Right. It was not a. It was not a a, a forty-four nothing drubbing repeat like the last. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It just. It was no. pretty exciting throughout the whole damn thing. So. I agree with you guys. I. Uh, I want to go out with a close game. I don't want to get blown out. You walk away saying, "At least I gave it my best." Right. Yep. 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 Then we had Arizona losing to Jugs. Another close game. Orlando taking it over Atlanta. Paris That's not surprising. He's got Orlando's got something going on with his fucking defense the last half of the season. He's just been fucking outstanding. Let's take a look. Yeah, he kept him on the fifty percent passing um, completion. His quarterback only. Quarterback rating of 46.6. He, um, how's the run? Well, you know, Kendrick uh, ran. Yeah. But Ken Kendrick's one of those. He's going to get his yards. Another good game. Fourth quarter was a shutout. Yep. It it was the, shut whole out. the whole half. Oh, no. Yeah. Um, the whole half, you're right. That was a little too little too late, yes? Yeah. Um, 
I was rooting for Paris, but didn't happen. But yeah, good I was season too. for him. Good season. Yeah, no, I oh, just want to say congratulations to Wait. That's the first time he's made the playoffs since joining the league. So it yeah. was really, it was really good to see. Right. It's listen for somebody who floundered for I think a year and a half real time, and never made the playoffs. Like when you finally put together a winning season, it's real. It's fun to play. Yeah, it's a good you know, feel. It's, Absolutely. There's just something different about it when you're when you're playing well and you're winning games. You got a chance to make the postseason. So congratulations to him. Great job. Hope it carries over. And, yep. uh, it it came, came down to him and uh, Mass Lewis, right? He had to win this game, that last game, to get into the playoffs. There it is. He had to beat Bordeaux to get in. I'm speaking about Paris. Yep. Yep. He did it in an away game, too. That's pretty good. Mm -hmm. I like it. Good for him. All right. Uh, let's go over the teams that we said we're going to take um, the division. We can start in the AC North. Who did we say? Or I, was, I just thought this way. Howie, you weren't here. You left, or did you stay for this? No, I was gone at this point. I lost my internet early. Got you. Grim, I know you said Toronto. I also said Toronto. Haynes, I know you were not here. Uh, yeah. But who would you have picked? 2020 hindsight, I know. But who would you have picked to take this division? I think Toronto is the unanimous decision in that division. Right now, anyway. Yeah, they will be for a while. I mean, Derek's got 1.1 1 .1 and possibly 132. But yeah, mm -hmm. he's going to. I don't know, man. He's just that team's built. Yep. I wonder yeah. what he's going to do with that pick. It, what, what pick? I've been telling him, man, if there's a fucking quarterback, you take him and you trade mock. <laughs> what pick? He's got one, one dot one. He does? From who? Moontown. Oh, that's right. Remember? That is he, can trade, he can trade mock to Moontown and get another first round pick. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Would, I, I would be scared to mess up that pass. I'd trade the first round pick for a whole boatload of more first round picks. And keep you know, the, with, with keep, the team that with the team that stacked. Yeah. That's what I do as well. I'd trade that first round pick for a whole boatload of first rounders. And keep that chemistry going, yes. And keep that chemistry going, right? I mean, why get rid of Mock? You're fourteen and two. He, he put up, well, the team put up 608 points, guys. 608 points. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, that's crazy. Um, and and, and yeah. only let in 352 points. Like, that's that's not shabby either. No. But, you know, Mock is 34. He's going to be 35 next year, so. Let's take a look. He's got another, what, four years in him? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. But, I mean, if there's a yeah. – honestly, if, if for me, even if I had Mock, if there was a generational quarterback sitting at 1-1, I'm taking him. And he can yeah. sit on the bench for maybe a yeah. season or two and learn, learn from Mock. But Mock's also making a lot of money. I mean, next year he makes what? I'm going to click on his thing right. there. Mm-hmm. Oh, he's going to sign him next year. He's got to sign him soon or trade him. Oh, he's got a cheaper contract next year. So, huh. Maybe it'd be worth it keeping him around. Yeah. Like I said, if there's a generational quarterback there, you take that, let Mock play one more season, and then let him go, you know. I didn't realize Mock was, was that old. Yep. He's been in the league a long time, man. Yeah. How we know in that information, would you still keep Mock? Um... I, mean, I mean, would you still keep the 1-1? One -one? I mean, trade the one one. I said, I meant to say. Uh, Depends on the yeah. draft class. Yeah, I mean. No, no. The generational quarterback that Grim said is sitting there. You no, I'd probably take. I think that changes things a little bit. Yeah, I'd probably draft the quarterback if there was a generational quarterback sitting there. Like the one, <laughs> like the one Ben has, Brady. Yeah. Or Levingston. Yeah, I think I think that that probably changes it. If Mock was in his eighth season or so, and he still had another 
eight or nine years left, I probably would trade it. But I think it, at that age, I'd probably take the quarterback. So no. take my first comment and strike it from the record. What do you, what do you think someone would pay for Mock if you put him on the market? Uh, what oh. someone would pay for Mock or what somebody should pay for Mock? That's two different questions. What someone would and should, and I want to go around the board here and how we will start with you. Uh, I would probably – I wouldn't pay much more than a third or a fourth round pick for him. And I and I say that because I've gotten quarterbacks with the exact same set of bars. To me, number you know numbers don't numbers don't matter to me because this game is so wonky that you can take a quarterback that puts up numbers like that in TZAC system, but you go and you run him in in Oakland system and he's not going to be nearly as productive. He'll be a solid player, but not worth not worth that much. I mean, Derek Bonlean had a very similar bar profile. He had. He was actually a little higher overall rated when I got it from Tzak at like 61, and I traded it. I got him for a fourth round pick, but because he had wasn't playing and didn't have all those huge numbers, Tzak didn't really argue, or didn't didn't put up a stink to get more. But to me, he's not worth much more than a third. Haynes, what do you think? I uh, I agree with Howie. I might. I mean, depending on what the situation looked like, I might give a second round for him. Um, but the reality is, I mean, he's not going to look nearly as good in a different offense that doesn't have, what, three 70 rated wide receivers. Exactly. Okay. All right. Grim. Yeah, that's, that's my take too. I mean, I, Se- prop- second, third, what? Third, maybe a second if I had a late second. But, I mean, for me, I've got absolute garbage on my team for quarterbacks. So, yeah, probably definitely a second I'd give for this guy. And I'd probably be able to do a little something with him. So, if he hit the market, you would say to um, CV, I'll give you a second for him. Yes? Yep. Okay. I like Howie. I think a third, third, fourth. And it's going to depend on the team that is that is in desperate need of a quarterback. Yeah. Yeah. However, um, third, fourth, what people will pay, I think second. I have a feeling that if someone's desperate for a quarterback, a second would be where people will pay. Yeah, and that's a, that's a guy, Clay, that I think could work in your offense too, you know? Yeah, I, I would definitely take him on my team. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. But <clears throat> going back to the division, we all knew Toronto. <clears throat> I'm glad um, Red Zone came up and went 8-8. Eight and eight. Yep, he kind of got his shit figured out halfway through the season. Mm-hmm. And then we had the next, <clears throat> excuse me, BC South, Atlanta. I think I picked Atlanta to take it, Swing Dog. And I think you guys pick Houston. I might have picked Chris. It was early on. I forgot. Was, I yeah, forgot he wasn't myself. doing. Yeah, I forgot. I should have went back and listened to the last show, wrote down who we picked. <laughs> but that was a division that was a cutthroat division, as you can see. Nine and seven, seven and nine, Houston seven and nine, um, yep. Fort Wayne. I was shocked, by the way, like I said before, that he f- he fell that far, Fort Wayne, to 4-12. and 12. Yeah, I wasn't expecting that. He's been pretty competitive Yeah. In, in recent seasons. I thought he'd just be right in the mix there. Exactly. I, f- I felt like he was more of a 9-7, and 10-6 team. Yeah, he's been coming up. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know who I would have picked to pick that division, but I wouldn't have picked Fort Wayne to be at the bottom. Of it. Right. That's the one thing that I know. Because his I would have picked Houston. His defense last season, Fort Wayne, that is, was a good defense, if I remember. Yeah, he's had a pretty solid defense. I mean, uh, up until now, he went nine and seven, seven and nine, eight and eight, and eight and eight. So I kind of expected him to, you know, stay in that stay in that realm this year again as well. So. 
Is it a rebuilding season for that division? Do you see? With the records the way it's going? I don't know. But I, I also didn't expect Houston to do as poorly as they did either. I thought him in Atlanta and yeah, I, I kind of figured they all be in that eight and eight, ten to six range, all of them. Because Atlanta's got a really good fucking quarterback. You know, we don't talk about Meadows much, but he's only, this was his third year starting? Second? Third? This guy right here? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, last season he put up 20 and 28 touchdowns, seven interceptions with a passing rating of 103. Yep. He was a little bit off this year, but. That's okay. In the 90s. You want to be 85 and up, yes, for your passing um, rating? Yeah, I, I, I would prefer it. I hardly ever get it, but. And he's a balanced team, as you can see. He doesn't throw a lot. No, nope, but he's got Ethan Kendrick, too. So that's, you know, you got a guy like that, you run the ball. Mm. Be interesting to see next season how this plays out, the AC South, with their teams. I feel like right now it's a rebuilding season for them because they're all within the same, within one or two games of each other, but under um, double-digit wins. That's my take. And then we go to AC East. Tucker, we all pick Tucker to win. Yep. Orlando strong showing snap fingers which i thought was going to end at 10 and 6 but something happened he lost his couple yeah of games. he fell off the wagon a little bit towards the end well there's one game where he had forgotten to put back in frankie leach after an injury yes and that sucks because that's almost an automatic loss i remember that i saw that um post that he had yep yeah, there it is. The last three games. So he lost to Augusta, who had a losing record. He <laughs> lost to Fairbanks. And what was Fairbanks' record? Six and ten. So Fairbanks had a lo losing record as well. And then Tucker. So See that, though? That's a tough end of the season. Five out of six away games, man. Jesus. Yeah. Well, I hate when they get grouped like that. Frankie Leach is still hurt. Did he play him? Did he play him hurt? I don't think he's still hurt. He's not showing on the injury. Is he? He's not even showing him that he was a starter. Hyperextended knee. Oh. No, I don't have him as hurt on my game. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I don't see him either. Well, oh. click on his things. Let's see how many games he was out. So he had a knee injury week 12. Well, that would probably explain the late season collapse then. Yeah. So let's see. If he won those two games against Augusta and Fairbanks, that would put him, where is he? That would put him at 10 wins. Yep, 10 and 6. 10 and 6. Would he have then beat out Paris? That's a question. Yeah, he might have. I don't think he played him this year, so we couldn't go head to head. Yeah, so what it, what is it? Would be division? It would be division. Yeah, and he's got, he would have had the... Uh, no, it would be, no, be conference. 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 So he, he, would, he, would be, he would be 7-5 and five conference. Yep. He would be tied then with Paris. I don't know how it goes no, from Fair, there. Fairbanks wouldn't have been a conference game. So if he beat Augusta and Fairbanks, he would have been sitting at 6-6, six and six, which still wouldn't have been good enough. Correct. You are correct. So, yeah, it's better losing than knowing that you're going to lose. All right. But I actually thought he was going to be 10 and 6. We all picked Tucker to be there. Oakland, uh, nice showing, 11 and 5, solid play. He moved on, I think, into the playoffs. Yes. Or did he yep, not he play? Won. No, Orlando. Orlando moves on. He plays that Tucker going to be a good game hopefully he gives tucker a good game takes it let's see 
Then we move down to um, AC West, Mass Lewis, Paris, Bordeaux, and I know everyone's shocked that Gutenberg is at eight and eight at the bottom. Um, I pick Mass Lewis to take it. Um, I know a lot of people pick Gutenberg. Yeah, I picked Julio. Yeah, that's that's who I would have picked. Same. And Had I been given the opportunity. Maybe yeah, he's, he's having quarterback quarter, quarterback pains, you think? What'd you say, Tony? I said, yeah, not used to seeing him at the bottom of the division. Yep. Yeah, no, well, I mean, still a 90, 90 rating. He didn't play bad, and he traded that uh, – Marshall Poffin, Poffinroff to Orlando after the season began. So I don't think he wanted to stir the QB controversy pot over there. Yeah. Um, I didn't think, I thought he would come in second, right behind uh, Mass Lewis. So if Mass Lewis came in at, let's say, I was thinking 11 and 5. Gutenberg would have been 10 and 6. However, you know, he'll come back around. No questions asked. But it's interesting how the 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 division flipped almost. Bardot finished it at 9 and 7. Like to see that. That was nice. Nip, you got some you got that team playing pretty good this year. Again, all he needed is that is that win at home in the last game, and he would have been in the playoffs. And I don't I'm talking about Bordeaux, but yes, Bordeaux has not been in the playoffs since twenty one oh three. Really? Yes, yeah, been a long time. He beat Houston. I mean, he beat your team, Howie. Until how he turned around his team and started winning games. Yes, he did. Scored a lot of points. It was ugly. He did put up a lot of points. He put up 394 points. That's a lot of points. He put up more points, by the way, than the NC West. Look at the NC West points. 336 is Oakland, Jugs' his team. Everyone else is in the high 200s, mid 200s, low 200s. Yeah, that division just crashed this year. Just crashed. <laughs> We're going to get to them. Absolutely. Yep. They did. It's nice to see uh, Whiting playing well. Didn't he drop right after he drafted him? Yes, I think he came out of the <sighs> gates and took a dump and then climbed back up a little bit this year. Yeah. Oh, he did? He crashed? Let's see. He did. Let's take a look. So he came in here, dropped to 40. Yes, he dropped to 46. Yep. yep. So this tells you, sometimes just hold on to the player and play it because they might come back. Well, you have to you have to hang on to your 1-1 one, one quarterback. <laughs> yep. I know Howie can uh, vouch for this because it happened to Howie and it happened to me. I picked a wide receiver yep. that crashed and I tried to play him thinking the same thing here. Never came back. Ever. No. Never. On my, I drafted a quarterback one, two, like my second, third year in the league. He never came back. I drafted a couple of bust wide receivers. And you're right. The, the, if you get them early in the draft and they bust, you're stuck with them unless you want to take a huge, huge, huge cap hit the next year. Yeah, and it's rare for these guys to come back after dropping. Yeah. And so yeah, but a, even even this Hardy Henson quarterback kind of took a dump because he was the one one Hardy Henson, but he kind of dropped yep. to a thirty eight, and now he's back up to like a thirty six or forty one, maybe better. But he tried to trade him, yes. I don't know. What's his uh, what's his cap number? Um, let's nine see. million. 
Ouch. Yeah, I had one of those. Artie Henson's pretty damn cheap. I I'd believe, look at him, but... I know. believe he tried to trade him, if I'm not mistaken. He'll maybe chime in on the forum. Um, so if any, I would take him. I would definitely take this guy. He's, oh, he's 5'11". Your favorite guys. Five yeah, eleven. not, well, not for Howie. Howie. Well, Howie likes him. I but... know, Howie doesn't care about height. Well, you... yeah, but he's a, he, he is a... He's a 5'11", deep pass, pocket passer. So he's not my cup of tea. How do you know he's a deep pass? I see long passes. So Okay, so you see Long passes. So he yeah, won't work passes. in your system? I don't think so. My shrimp quarterback likes to roll out. So in my mind, I know Ben just says that it's, it's zeros and ones, but I like Grimm's approach of tiny little guys playing games. In my mind, my offense always boots out. So my quarterback's never throwing the ball, very rarely throwing the ball from behind the – the line of scrimmage, he's always rolling to the right, rolling to the left, throwing outside the lines. So this then, guy, yeah, he, he, he'd get balls batted down all the time. Go ahead, Haynes. What were you going to say? Oh, I, I didn't have anything. Oh, so this quarterback has a bench press of eight, but he's a long passer. How does he pass – when he doesn't have the arm to pass long passes. Well, that QB, that, yeah, that QB style play, that just gives you a tiny bonus to whatever style that is. You know, so for me, I throw a lot of short passes, so I always try to have a short passer. But uh, with this kid, that bench, I mean, look at his long pass bar. He's zero. His deep pass bar is 38 to 48, so he's not really a long passer, you know? Correct. This, this guy looks like he'd be throwing screens and medium passes all over the place. So my question is, if you throw medium and long passes, are you getting negative against you because of his um, bench presses at eight? Yeah, again, that QB style, I don't know how much that would offset the fact that he has a zero on the long pass bar. Yeah. I would imagine that would equate into a lot of interceptions. Yes. I'm, I have to agree with you guys. I just and never... Yeah, his average interception is 12.8, so that's bad. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. is it? Yep. Oh, forget it then. Yeah, 12.8. That's um, Red Zone's favorite. <laughs> I don't think so. I know. I think he, I think he would say, <laughs> say differently. <laughs> he should be here soon. No, because he used to text me saying, this guy's interception rating is XYZ. I would never take him. And that's why he made that comment. Um, yeah, it's good to see that Bardo also brought his team. And so that division next season, i love to see how it's going to play out, by the way. AC West. I'm going to be watching that. And see if there's a, a new, um, we'll call it a new king, that's going to continue taking um, the division. If you guys had to choose who's going to take the division next season, based upon... What you see now in the roster, who do you think will take that division? Oh, man. You can't be biased. I know we have a bias about history and all that stuff. Take that out of your head and just go by what you're seeing. But what I'm seeing, I, I will never count Julio out of winning that division. You just can't do it. I mean... I mean He's like, take out the recency bias. Yeah, <laughs> I can't. <laughs> I can't. Julio's a fucking good GM, and he's just he's won the division so many fucking times. This is a fluke. I mean, I can't. I mean, I guess again, got to go through free agency. You got to go through the draft. See who gets, you know, I'm new not, players on their team and figure I, shit out. But I'm going by what you. I'm I'm telling you, go by what you see here. What would you say? I would say Julio would win next year, and then Mass Lewis and Paris. You get in second with the playoff spot. One of the two. Interesting. How about you, Haynes? Uh, I get rid of my recency bias and say Mass Lewis. Okay. Plus, he's got Ronaldo. I got a root for Ronaldo. Is that your guy? He used to be my guy. He had a good season. Yes, he did. 
Yeah, and I think that's hurt. something that uh, Matijus has been missing for a while is that quarterback that looks like that. Exactly. Not that Tanner really guy. Season. Yeah. <laughs> well, Wilson got injured, so he was hoping he had Bart Tanner. He was talking about that before, and he's like, man, I should have capped him out and did something. I got grab some coffee, gentlemen. Be right back. Good. Howie, if you had to say yeah. AC West. You know, it's a coin flip between Mass Lewis and, and, and Gothenburg. And there, and it's it's not the uh, it's not the the recency bias that's making me pick Gothenburg. It's look at the points for and the points against. Like they're almost identical, right? Correct. I mean, yes, Maslow's they scored twenty more points, but the points against. I, I just I think it's a coin flip. I think you look at that, and if a couple of different things happen, then maybe it's Gothenburg that's ten and six, and Maslow that's that's eight and eight. So. It's it's a coin flip between those two, but if I had to pick just based on the roster they have now, I'm going to roll with Maslow again just because of the because he made, he did it this year. Yeah, no no other division gets as close as that. There's a two win difference. You know, I just yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, I have to agree what you just said. Julio is a great GM, so he he knows how to put together a team with very little talent. He can put it together and still do well. I mean, look at look at. I mean, their numbers are almost identical. Conference, both six and six. The only thing that's different is the division, where Mass Loss was was four and two, and Gothenburg was two and four. They were both five and three at home. You, you know, that's that's one of those where it literally is. It's a coin flip. If you play this. If you play those, if those two teams play each other ten times, each team wins five. I like the take. Interesting take. If I had say next season, I would say um, Mass Lewis and Gutenberg. That's what I would say for next season. Now we come to. Our conference, NC North, starting with Chicago taking it at fourteen and two. I think we all picked Chicago um, to take that division at the time, even though um, people thought Arizona was going to come back and maybe overtake him. But everyone settled on Chicago. But great season for Chicago. Zappa, excellent, Congrats. excellent job, fourteen and two. What were you going to say, Haynes? I was just going to say, uh, great job, Zappa. He uh, he put it together. 14 wins, that's a big number. It is. Let's look at his games. And he won, but he won big. If you look at it, 34 to 7. 23 to 6. His defense has been off the charts. 49 to 20. 20 to 3. Uh, against Iowa, this was a close game. 44 to 10 against Jugs, he won. 47 to 21. So he dominated all the teams he played when he won, except yeah. for one team. Actually, two teams. Let's see. Two, three. One, two. Three teams. Everybody else who he won against, he won by big, big time. Well, look at that running back, man. <laughs> Crane? Yeah, he's, he's insane. He's a beast. Six, six foot, 233 pounds. Those bars? Yeah, he's like Worcester back when Worcester had some bars, but he took a nosedive this year, so... <clears throat> He put up 1,700, 4.41, 13 touchdowns. Was he hurt in 21-18? Rain? Yes, he was. He yeah. had a serious okay. hamstring. He came back from it. You would think that with the serious hamstring, it might affect him later on, but it did not so far. No, he retained his bars. He's only 25. 
So that just means he's going to just be killing you guys up there for another five seasons at least. Yes, he is. Or it... longer. <laughs> or longer, yeah. Maybe he'll get hit by a car. Maybe there's some <laughs> IHOP. Is that something that's in, in the game? I'm actually going to program it. I've actually been programming Toba it. Tobacco tobacco withdrawal syndrome. <laughs> there you go. No, that's only, I for, one of my... that's only for defensive tackles, dude. Is it? They're the only people that smoke. Are you serious? I No, I don't think so. But any time I've ever seen one of those, it always seems to be like a defensive tackle. I've had I have two. one of my guys. Mine was a defensive end. Yeah, so it just seems to be the D-line guys that are fucking smoking the tobacco. But it's just like withdrawal syndromes. That's not even a fucking... I mean, you're going to be out an entire year because he quit smoking? I, I, I don't... Uh, yeah. Oh, is it an entire year? Yes. No, it's it, it, it's not. My, my guy was back after like four or five weeks. It is a... It's one of those where you don't know. I think it's, it's yeah, randomly it's, set when know. injury comes up. But yeah, you don't. It doesn't say. It doesn't say. You know, out for yeah, four weeks. Yeah, it, says it just says out. Un, yeah, it says unknown. Unknown. Yep, yeah. that's what it and says. It, it, and it can be. It can be all season long. I think my guy was only out for like four or five weeks. I um. I did not put him on the injured reserve just in case he came back for the playoffs and he ended up coming back. Yep, I've had since my time in the league. I've had two defensive tackles go out with that. But yeah, just pay attention to it, Clay. If you see it come up, I think it's almost always a defensive lineman. I can't remember ever seeing any other position. I will make a mental note. I really will. But yeah, congrats to Zappa. That's Zappa. I finally nice put going. that together. Yep, absolutely. Arizona Millman. Good season another, for you too. Twelve. Minutes, yeah, another 12 great season. And then we have myself and Iowa. I didn't like the way we were playing. So I expected – actually, I expected us to be last, to be honest. But we wound up not being last. But it was only by because I tied Grim. I mean, not yeah. Grim, um, Jugs. Yeah, but Clay, we were – I mean, I was thinking you might win the division. You were what? At the six-game mark? Three and three? Yeah, you were three and three. Maybe I, don't, I think I think we all called Chicago. Yes, we did. And then probably we would have called Melman second. Yes. If we were calling second. That's happened. Yes. That's how it played out. Yeah, well, I just, with the manual Huntley out, dude, I knew you were going to be fucked. Well, our wide receiving core is old. So now it's time for us to rebuild. You know, it sucks because we still have Ike and he's going to need a wide receiver. Oh, I'm bringing in red zone right now. Um, yeah, and, and Ike could still go another four or five seasons. He's only 33. He'll he be 34 can. next season. He can. I just now need to put wide receivers, you know, in his... Um... Now, didn't you say you were going to cut Huntley? And didn't I mention that... I could. I asked, this is yeah, that's what game. I said. I'm like, will he take an injury settlement? That's why, that's why I... Mention that. Yeah, figured that's what it was. He, the game wouldn't let me cut him. Boom. Yep, Huntley. No, because Huntley had a, a fifty-two week injury or something. I, what was it? Fifty-two or sixty something week. He's got forty-four. Um, right now you guys weeks. Hear me? we yep. hear you. Okay. And by the time he's going to retire, he's thirty-five. He's not going to play next season. So he's not going to play next season. It's time for me to cut him because of I'm not going to sign a wide receiver. Um, yeah, and if he retires next year, that's not hardly any bonus that's going to be ripping you off, you know? No, it's not. It'd be a good time for him to go. Yeah, he, he retired with us, which I love it. He did well for us. Can't, you know. But it's time for to rebuild my team to now go up against Iowa's coming up in the ranks. I got to take on Arizona and Chicago is a steam machine right now. What's um what's Iowa's dead money situation look like? Let's take a look. Oof. 
hundred million. <laughs> <laughs> How is it every season he's a hundred and something million over the cap? I don't understand. He never that. lets anyone leave his team. I, I'm not seeing. There's a handful of people I could say I've seen him. I'm talking in fantasy football leagues, in FOF. You know, these people just have a dead set in their mind. You're not getting this guy for free. I'm going to get something for him, or I'm going to keep him. I'm not cutting anywhere. I'm not giving anything away. And at some point, this is what happens. You're 100 million over the cap. Yeah. And I've been guilty of it lately too. I've fallen into that trap. You don't want to let your team disintegrate. And you want to resign everybody, and then you look up and you're in cap hell. And you're like, you know what? These guys aren't superstars. They weren't yeah, necessary. Man. I didn't have to keep all of them. Okay, some of them you just let leave each season and replace them with a cheaper player in free agency or your draft replacement. You have to learn to do that, and I have to relearn how to do it because I haven't been doing it myself. I don't know. Yeah. I've I I very rarely let people leave on my team unless I'm like specifically going after a replacement for them, and I'm never over the cap. I just don't. I don't know. Yeah, I don't. I don't get it. Well, I right now have thirty eight million, give or take, uh, thirty seven <clears throat> and some change plus the increase, which I don't know what that'll be. So I'm not in cap hell, but I'm not in a position to really go make any noise at free agency either. Yeah, but yeah, I, I think, was ninety some ninety million dollars over the cap. Yeah, that's a problem. Yeah, and you know, usually Mass Lewis is over the cap too. He's always trying to get shit situated before the draft and all that. You know, he's twenty million over, which isn't much. You'll get that. He'll figure it out. Yeah, but here's I the think, thing. You know why he's not really over the cap? Because he let what's the QB's name? Tanner. Yeah, he let him leave rather than try and keep him with Wilson. If he had tried to keep Tanner, he'd be in the same cap hell that he's willing. So I know he's not happy about that because he would have rather had Tanner now that Wilson's hurt. But in the long run, it's a bet, it's a good decision for him. He'll be better off. So this is hurting Iowa from keeping a, a good team together and continuing a good team. Well, he's got... Eighty million in dead cap next year. Correct. Which I see. Where, where's mine? I've got twenty two. Normally I'm up around fifty, sixty, eighty, somewhere in there. So I mean that's a big part of it now. You know, when you make trades, we've talked about this. Where does the bonus go? What year does it hit? You know, what's what's dead money? What are you eating? What are you not eating? And there are ways around that. And I've made comments like, you know, that money's already gone. But at the end of the day, that's still a bad number when it gets high. Because so when that season hits, I say you have six hundred and forty three million, six forty three point eight this year. If you've got a hundred million of that dead cap, that means you've only got five forty three point eight to spend. While some other team might have five ninety three or five you know, or, or six oh three. So I mean it, at some point it catches up to you. I'm so, just not sure that, you know, if you're ready to make a deal for a stud player, that you know, you're not willing to concede that. One season, but every year you can't be up at 60 and 80 million every year. Well, here's a question for everyone that's on here Are you picking up players to better your team for multiple years, or are you picking up a player or players for just that one season to try to make the bowl and eat or take your medicine? We call it the next season, knowing you're going to be able to cap. Well, you're not going to be over the cap next season if you sign a one-year deal because they won't be back. So it has to be a multi-year contract. Correct. Cost cap so let's start so let's, there. Well, let's take, take a look at the contract view. Okay, who? who? Yeah, and go, go, go all the way up and click on contract view. Left, right there. And then, Boom. Save and then release. go over to cap costs. Boom. No, save release is all zero, but here's cap costs. Yeah. All his top players um, are seven years experience or more. Seven and years, that, nine years, eight and years. And that's big, too. Years. No doubt about it. Go Click on Devontae Monroe. What's his salary look like? Devontae Okay. Let's look at that. Yep. All bonus. Well, he capped him out. How do you know that? <laughs> yeah, he must have capped him out this year. How do you know that? Because it's he's because three point five three in salary this year, forty four point six nine next year. 
He yeah, took all the bonus and put it into next year. That's a cap boat. And that's how he gets it down underneath. That, that he, he just keeps capping out, capping that, out players. And that creates kick, dead cap. Okay. Kick it down the next year. And you're keeping your players to do it. And that's why you're over the cap. But how, yeah. is it, how is it creating dead cap if he's still on your team? Well, I don't know. If, okay, maybe it's, maybe it's a bad way to put it. Maybe it's not dead cap. But it's no, increasing, no, but, but, it, but, it's but, increasing but, your cap to the point where you're over. Maybe right, but then, you're right. It's probably not dead but, but then, but in it, it does create dead cap money because at some point you're going to have to release somebody because you're going to need to get underneath the cap. And, and if you've been playing the cap, yeah. And if and if you've been playing the cap out game to to save money, at some point you're going to have to release players that you capped out. So you're releasing them, and they're going to you're going to eat all of that that bonus money. Gotcha. Like if he were if yeah. if he were to release that guy next season, he'd take forty two million dollars in bonus money and eat that. Look at the top three. They're all cap outs. And so then my question oh. is, when you cap out. Top four? You can't really trade these players because, oh, yeah, you can, but you're eating that you're bonus. You're eating that cap. Exactly. But, but it's the same thing, right? Like you trade that guy and you're, eat, you're, you know, you're taking a $24 million cap hit next year. His top five, top five players on that uh, cap cost just get out of the top five. They're all capped out. Yeah. But now, too, if, some of these guys – may resign for a lot less than that next season, you know, but I, I don't suspect that like well, McKnight's no, going to, cause he's a wide receiver, well, but, but you're, but you're still going to be on the hook for the $29 million. They're not, it's not going to be that much less. Well, look at Devontae Monroe. Yes. So say next season, he'll play for less than 44.69, but he's still going to have 42.3 in bonus. Yeah. Well, even more, because if you resign him, he's going to want right. a little bit you're more bonus. That. With that. So how, how do you save money on him next year? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Next year comes, he's owed eighty-six million dollars, eighty, eighty-six nine. Okay, yep. we'll just cause we'll call it eighty-seven million dollars. You're right. saying if he asks for a new contract, you still have to pay that forty-two three. Yeah, yeah, that that forty-two million dollars is guaranteed. So if, if so, if he'll renegotiate, let's say he wants to renegotiate for a two-year deal, mm-hmm. and he wants it to be a ninety a ninety million dollar salary a 90 million dollar overall salary over two years right so you'd pay him 20 million dollars a year in base salary but he'd still be looking for 15 million dollars a year in bonus money so you're going to add that 15 million to the 42 million Ah. so you're still looking at the same so what are you really saving i got you so you're not you're not spreading out that 42 three you're you're saying yeah you're getting this 42 three However, we're adding now more bonus to that forty-two-three. Yes. Yep. Yep. No, but technically, know. if he resigns him next year, say he gets his overall salary with the salary and the bonus down to sixty million for two years, I mean that's you know you're saving twenty million in salary. So on both of those years, it's just the salary, but it's the bonus right now where he's at. Yeah, yeah, the bonus ain't going away. See, there are two ways to do cap outs, and I don't think a lot of people realize this. You can do cap outs to save money to get under the cap, and you can save big chunks like he did. When that salary dropped to three point five three this season, he had to have saved what ten million or more. That would be my guess. So that's one way to do it. The other way is just to avoid the holdout. You can change the numbers. In a cap out. Once you click cap out offer and it comes up on your screen, just like any other contract, you can adjust those numbers. So you don't have to save 10 million and add 10 million on the next year. But once you cap a player out, he will not hold out. So there's two ways to do cap outs. So his safety is 33 years old, he's going to be 34 next season. He's going to owe $24 million. Now, he can, he can eat it and drop this guy, or try to trade him, I should say. Hopefully, someone pays for him, but they're going to only pay a 33-year-old. They're going to say, I'll give you a what? A fifth round at best? Yes? Six? Fifth? Get much. I mean, it's... You think we'll get a fourth? See, here's the thing I don't understand. Doesn't Jacek draft fairly well? He does. Okay, so why isn't he bringing in young players to replace these older expensive players 
and picking and choosing which ones he keeps and working his cap better. Because he could. Well, he, he could. could. He absolutely could. And I've I've said now, this If he before. sucked at drafting, it would be one thing. But he doesn't. He doesn't. No, he picks good players. I don't know. I just – I think that if – if I were the GM of this team, I it, it it's it's a two year it's a two year process to fix that cap space. That's the problem too. You can't right. Do it so anymore. you you know that. Listen, I, you know, and it's it's not tanking, but you're gonna you're gonna finish at the bottom of the league because you can't keep all those guys. You're gonna cut so them. You're getting, you're getting rid of a boatload of high end guys. You're gonna, you, you, and and you can't. And because of the tanking rules, you can't trade them, right? Well, no, I guess in this situation you could. You're over the cap, so so in this you, you trade away as many of those guys as you can to get something back in return. Get yourself under the cap, you know, this year, and then next year you got to do the exact same thing. Get rid of offload a boatload of those high salary guys, and then after on your third year you start rebuilding again. But how he's exactly right. It's not a one year process. It's a two year process. Maybe three. Depends right, how many because, of these guys you've got and how long it takes. Because because at the end of this year, that lost cap room, the, that ninety eight million dollar in lost cap room is gonna go away and that eighty million dollars is gonna push over. And you're gonna you're when cutting guys, you're gonna get more dead cap money. Mm-hmm. Now, what do you, that will push over the second year. Hold on, hold on, Red Zone. What do you, Howie, what do you mean the eighty million gets pushed over? It's okay. next year's loss. Yes, correct. It, right. it goes well, to next year's loss. Year. So, it, so then, so okay. then you're gonna have to, you're gonna start that whole bleeding process over again to get back down under the cap. So then the the next year, however much dead money you waste, you're gonna lose that again. That's gonna be this year and the second year. So let's say he's got to, he's got to release four guys. So now, you know his his cap hit's going to be ninety seven million. That's yep. going to be year two. Oh, I see. So it, let's say he said, "I'm going to release this guy. I'm going to lose forty two million, right? Right, forty two. Okay, that's gone. And then he goes, "I'm going to lose a safety. He's going to cost me another twenty four, right? So right that's now 66. we're sixty six. So sixty six million dollars just dropping two guys right there." And that would yeah, be and, 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 that, and that would be the lost cap for next season. And that would be the lost cap for next season. So then at the end of next year, that push that sixty four million would push back over and then it would it would be zero again. The whole cycle starts over. And those two players won't get him under the cap. No. Exactly. Still gotta do more. <laughs> well, I can tell you this. I mean, you know, Clay would say this too. Those two wide receivers you're keeping both of those guys and you're paying them what they're getting. You know, Clay's routinely had a hundred million or, or more invested in a number, you know, a few, two or three wide receivers. I'm just not really seeing anybody on his team. I think it's just, this has been a product of him being in cap hell for so fucking long. Cause there's not that many people that he really should be cutting. I mean, I I'd get rid of that fucking strong safety, but no, there's listen, there's 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 people that he sh- there's people you should cut and people you have to cut. And some people you just let leave as a free agent. You let them play the last year of their contract and walk. Yep. Now, look well, it looks what like Judge he's not going to have a choice. Now, look at what look at what Judge does in free agency. This is I've said this a couple of times. I think. He does free agency better than anybody I've seen and he does it a different way than anybody I've seen. He'll sign a player and he'll spend money. He'll go out and sign somebody. You know, look at the, the QB he signed, Corner. What do you pay him? A lot. Uh, that's just one example. He'll he'll spend the money, and he'll he'll outbid everybody to get the guy he wants, and he'll play that contract on his team and walk and walk. That's it. He's not trying to resign him because he knows that bonus is going to fuck him in the fourth year, fifth year, or third year. Okay, he's not going to do that. He signs players for that amount of money. When that contract's up, he takes that money and goes and signs somebody else. Now, here's Sometimes my. Sometimes you just have to let people walk. Here's my question, Red Zone, about that. He has a rookie uh, quarterback. It's going to be his, oh. Uh, oh. Iowa. Iowa. So next season will be his second year. But he's got old aging uh, wide receivers. Like this one I have on the screen, 31 years old. 
he's going to cost them $77 million next season. $40 million of it is going to be bonus. Thirty-seven is the salary. Do you trade this guy away knowing that you have a rookie quarterback is going to be with you to 37 years old? Let's get younger players later and let's get back underneath the cap that Howie was talking about. And given that two-year window to recycle and get back to... See, which receiver are you talking about? Bradley Annals. Let me take a look. Where's he at? I trade into Moontown for a first. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <You get it. laughs> okay. but, but here's my problem. Okay? Um, it's going to depend, I think. You know, And I can't speak. I don't know what Ben looks at. Okay, But if you're going to try and make a trade like this, now, this Bradley Annault, He'll save seven thirty-seven million next year. He's in cap hell. so that might very well be a deal that would be approved. Okay, but for example, take um, both of his wide receivers are in the thirty years old. His... Lenny Briggs. Okay, look at Lenny Briggs' contract. Lenny, you're Briggs. not going to trade Lenny Briggs and say, "Well, I'm in cap hell. I have to do this." Lenny... That's trading for picks. I don't think that would be approved. No, it's just my opinion, and it's not up he, to me. He, he, no one would take him anyway. You couldn't trade yeah. him. Who's training for him? Oh, look I at agree. him on my screen. I'm looking at the contract, not the bar. So I, mean, I, I agree with you. But, I mean, I'm saying that, you know, if you're going to use the I'm in cap hell, you've got to be trading guys that are saving you big time dollars towards that cap hell, I think. He's got a 22-year-old quarterback who will be 23 next year. Yeah, but he tanked, man. I can't see. Unless he comes back in a big way next season and those bars jump back up, man, this guy's not going to be on a team more than three years. Okay, I can't see, even I can't. Okay, even, look, even look what, more. Hold on, even more the, numbers, the better. He put up, he put up some good numbers for a rookie. I mean, Grim, okay. look at those numbers. If I'm yeah, him, he didn't I'm do bad. This guy, I want to see. I, he needs to be on the team four years and play at least three of them, and I need to see what his final ratings are. All right, he might go up and down, and as good as he's playing, I don't care if nobody else likes him. He sure fits my system. But even more, what you just said, Grim. That let's say it isn't his quarterback. Why would you even have these overpriced wide receivers on your team? Exactly. At at the end of the day, and just do what Howie just said. Do the two year process. You're going to go through the pain, yes, because you put yourself there and clear the books and start from there. If this guy is not your quarterback, if he is your quarterback in two years' time, he'll be 24. He'll be more um, well, established, it, right? To to yeah, take on. No, I can see it. Yeah, I mean, I would de- if I was him, I would definitely this this off season trade one of those wide receivers, and probably a Nolte. You could probably get the first for him. Yeah, he's going to be thirty two, but yeah, you could get you know three or four seasons out of him, and somebody I. The league is always in need of wide receivers. There's always a bunch of teams that needs wide receivers. You think a first or seconds would be? I mean, I'll probably end up with like 126, 27 this year, maybe. And I, I would trade a late round first for him. For who? Absolutely. For a Nault? No way. In his 11th year? Yeah. Wow. I would no chance. What would you give Red Zone for either one of these? Uh, McKnight. McKnight has a 62 route running and a 73. Um, See, McKnight's 30 in his eighth year. Anault is 31 as in his 11. I'd be yeah. more interested in McKnight, but oh, a, a late first maybe for McKnight. Anault no more than a second. And and I mean I'm I'm talking I mean. I made a post about this. If people want to talk about this moon time trade and everybody's, uh, you know what? You make a deal, you get on the phone with somebody, you get a PM, you're on uh, Slack or Discord or whatever, you're chatting back and forth. You're, you're trying to work a deal, somebody makes an offer, you're like, that doesn't look too bad. You make the deal. Well, we've all made deals where we've, made, we've had regret later. You're like, nah, maybe I could have gotten more. I don't know what moon time thinks about the trade now. Be right back, guys. Yep. But if you're going to trade a first round pick, and I've been guilty of trading more first-round picks than probably anybody, okay? But for me, I want at least eighth year or younger, probably sixth year, 
player. Okay, I don't want 10th, 11th, 12th year. How many of them guys just crash and burn? You just can't do it. Yeah, probably I, I a can't. lot. I just can't do it. Well, so now here's the question, Clay. You got Broderick, Broderick McKnight up there. Uh, Why in yeah. the fuck was he targeted only 32 times? Exactly. What's the problem? Look at Ralph Barr, look at the get downfield. I mean, the endurance isn't bad. Game planning. Yeah. You have to find it's, it's, a way to make him the, the primary target more often. Uh, I we all agree on that one. I mean, Absolutely. yeah, that might have been the difference between the playoffs and not making the playoffs is targeting that guy a little bit more too. That's weird. Wow. And honestly, in my mind, look at the stats these two guys put up. You can trade Bradley and Nalt and use McKnight in that spot and not change your depth chart or game plan anywhere else and get the same production. Yeah. How we would. Howie, what would you pay for these in the trade? I'd probably give a first for Broderick McKnight, a, a, a late first. Um, I tra- traded with Ben to get a wide receiver with similar bars for a first. Um, an alt, yeah, I'd probably uh, – I wouldn't trade for an alt. Yeah, I don't think I'd I would, want him. That's the problem. It's not what I, I, would, I don't think I'd want him. You know, yeah, I wouldn't trade for him at at eleven at eleven season, eleven years old. Not unless first of all, he's a cap all, killer. He's going to show well, up and want an extension. Yeah, you know, or just him. you know, maybe like let's say that my, my number one wide receiver went down with an injury and was going to be out for another for the, the vast majority of this season. So let's say he tore his ACL in the bowl game or late in the playoffs, and he was looking to to not be back until the, the middle or the end of next season. If I felt that my quarterback was aging and I had one more year to make a run and I needed a receiver to do it, then maybe if an alt was there, I might do it. But that's just because it's, hey, you know, my my window is right now and if I don't have a wide receiver, you know, there's not going to be a bowl in two years in my future. I need this guy now to make a run. It's a different, little bit of a different story. But in in Texas, the way it stands now, I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade for that guy. You just said something that's interesting, Howie. You said, if my window is right now, I make the trade, and so we make the trade for older veteran players because our window is right now, and that is the piece that we need to get over that hump. Yes, but if you're yeah. not there yet, it's one of the pieces you need, but you need a couple others. You don't make a trade for a veteran and right. give it's up. Like, Go ahead. Right. No, it's, it, it, it's, that's exactly, that's exactly right. Jugs, are you here? I'm here. We're just talking about Iowa's team that they're in cap hell. And we're looking at his players. Again, how shocking. <laughs> we're looking at his players that he has to get rid of. Because he's going to be about a hundred million over a cap next season, and so Howie and Red Zone and everyone chimed in about what they would do with his team if they had his team to for two years just fix it, get rid of these dead weights because they're expensive, older veterans, and start fresh again. That's what we were talking about. And then I said his quarterback's twenty-two years old. You know, and he has these older wide receivers that are not going to do him any well, trade them, and try to, to build his team from scratch with younger wide receivers. That's where we are. So, so, and, and I, I mean, I'm driving. I don't have the game in front of me. Is he capping every single player out on his team? Is that how he ends like, up in cap hell every year? It sure looks yes. like I mean, at some point, don't you learn from your own mistakes? No, he laughs about it. Spend it all. Well, he needs to cap virtually. He needs CCFL all over again. Yeah. Yeah. The top five guys um, in cap cost on his roster right now are all cap outs. And they all went down under, like, I think they're all under $5 million salary this year. And bonuses are out of sight this year and next. So that means they're all going to what, 30, 35, 40 million next year? A lot of them are 40, 45, yeah. 
Yeah, so you have one at 42, one at 24, and the rest we haven't really looked at, but they're they're up there. And so, but they're older veterans. They're eight-year, eleven-year veterans with these um, cap hits. Oh wow! So, old, old, old guys. Yes. Well, they just showed two receivers here, Judge. A tenth-year guy and an eleventh-year guy. The tenth-year guy's thirty. The eleventh-year guy's thirty-two. No, no, no. And they're like, "Would we trade for these guys?" Yes. And I'm looking at them like, well, 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 well one's, probably not. One, one, one's an eighth year, but he's 30 years old. The other one's 11th year, and he's 31 years old. Okay, eighth year, and he's 30. You're right. That's Broderick and Knight. Um, Then you have a safety that's a nine-year veteran who is eating up a lot of cap for, let's see what his next season is going to be. He's gonna is be that the safety he got in the uh, Adelaide trade? Yes, it is. Mm-hmm. Yes, it is. One of the things That's I the said, the only Judge, player he kept from that trade. Hmm. Hey, one shit, the, Jugs is here. Awesome. One of the things I said, Jugs, is doesn't Iowa normally draft decent? I mean, he's, he's pretty good. Why isn't he drafting young guys and letting these old guys leave? I mean, just let them walk. Well, you guys can always reach out well, to mean, and, and ask. But go ahead. I mean, you jokes. can't. It's kind of it's kind of hard to bat, draft badly when you're outside of the top. I mean, when you're inside the top ten every single year, you know, you should get a sixty-five plus rated player in the top ten every year. Um, Although his quarterback isn't that. I don't know where. What do you draft that quarterback? One point three, one point four. Yeah, one point three. Yeah, that, right. that guy's no good. He went seven and nine. Let me see. Where's he at? One, yeah, it, the, the rest of the roster three, is actually pretty good, four. but the quarterback position is going to hold him back. Well, we were just talking about the NC North because we did the other conference, and we started talking about Chicago. Excellent job, Zappa did. Arizona, again, excellent job going 12 and four. Uh, my team was shit. And then we talked about Iowa that – Maybe next season they take the next step. However, we looked at their cap, and a lot of their guys they're going to have to get rid of. So it's going to hinder. It's going to hinder his team next season. Well, and if the if the wide receivers are older, they're going to drop. Their ratings are going to drop. So that's where we are right now. And now we're jumping over to the NC South, where it's um, Howie's team, Texas. Howie came back from being 0-4. We got Outer Banks, Haynes, who's also on the line. He went 8-8. Eight and eight. Cap City went 5-11. and 11. And Moontown, 2-13-1. and one. So, Haynes, um, are you on the line? Yeah, I'm here. Why don't you tell us about your team, team? Since um, we haven't had you on for a while, I know you traded away your quarterback Wilson and picked up Wilkinson. But yep. yeah, we've we've evolved a bit over the years. Um, <clears throat> like I said in the forum, um, you know, we've been run first for the last. 19 seasons and I wanted to shake things up a bit uh, when I had Ronaldo Wilson um, and he was you know he was he was he was the talent of the team most of the talent I figure well let's see let's see if, let's see what he can do um, let's convert from run first to pass first um, he was he was scrambling so much um, that he was the lead rusher for the for the for the team every year. So I crafted a uh, pass first offense. It took me a while to, to get it to get it to work. Um, in that season, he uh, he passed for fifty one hundred fifty two hundred yards, 
and and scrambled for another almost a thousand. I think it's a nine eighty six or something like that. Um, but we still didn't win any more games than we did before. So uh, had another season. We we uh, I kept the same offense. I ran a little bit more. I had uh, Pelagonia at the time. Uh, so I ran the ball a little bit more that season. Still didn't pick up any additional wins. So I thought, well, it's got to be this red flag that's holding me back because I couldn't, you know, I couldn't get it to work no matter what I tried with the guy. Um, and uh, red red zone came along and uh, made me an offer. So I thought, yeah. That's Tri Wilkerson. And he actually did really well the first season. Yeah, I see that. What did you change your game plan this season? Because he No, you know what happened? No, I... He lost his starting tight end, a stud, and he lost his starting wide receiver, a stud. I can guarantee you Tony would have been in the playoffs had those yeah. two people not been injured, and I would be I was... sitting on my ass. Absolutely. Yeah, I, was... I was playoff bound. I was six and three. Week nine, it was feeling pretty good. Team was playing well. Wilkinson wasn't really playing that well. Well, he's uh, dropped nine points in the last two seasons. But Six we were last year and three, three this so, year. So, and I, I was never. He is 36. I was never six and three with Ronaldo. Yeah. He played I mean, great the first year. I mean, there's no know. question about it. I kept looking every week. God damn you. <laughs> I bet you were kicking yourself that season. I was not happy. So, so, so we hey. lost. Uh, we lost Stevens in week nine. Um, top receiver. Then we lost Wiggins in week ten or week eleven. Um, top tight end. So those are my my best two two offensive players. Uh, wow, the interceptions killed you this year. Holy cow. 24. You have a passing rating of 65.8. And I'll bet if you take 10, or, 10 interceptions off that, it's 75 or pushing 80. Whew. Wow. Yeah. Well, it, the completion it, percentage dropped a lot too. So, so my question uh, is going to be to you, Haynes. Did you think when Howie dropped to 0-4, um, this was your division? Yeah, it was looking that way to me. Like I said, until we lost Stevens and and uh, Wiggins, I mean, you lose your top two offensive players, your your, your seventy one rated tight end and uh, sixty seven rated receiver. Yeah, Wilkerson's not going to look good. I mean, that's why he's got a sixty five rating. You know, he lost his 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 targets. But I think uh, I think had I not lost those two guys, we would have we would have made a playoff run. Yep, absolutely. I'm guessing you win at least two more with those two guys still in. Probably take the division, honestly. So, are you going to roll it back and run it again? Yes. Are you? Am I going to what? Are you going to roll it back and send the same group out there next year saying, hey, if they hadn't got hurt, we've been in the playoffs. Maybe this year they won't get hurt and run the same team. Or are you going to make changes? Yeah, I'll run these guys right back out there. Um, I still feel like I need a quarterback for the future. But not um, for this season. For this upcoming season? Yeah. Not a rookie. Maybe an experienced quarterback it depends on what's out there in free agency but i'll roll with wilkerson again if i need to the only thing i, I don't like about him is i mean he, he doesn't have any scramble frequency i like the quarterback to be able to run just a little bit um 
Uh, uh, Wilson had a couple of years. He scrambled for a thousand yards. You like him to have a lot of scramble. Oh, you got um, Grimm's quarterback. <laughs> Is he any good, Grimm? Where's Grimm? <laughs> he was. He was. He was. He was good for one season. <laughs> yes, he was right here. 2018, 2118, Amen. Yep. All right. I think what, if these guys come back, at, um, at what scrambling? No, he had one decent season. He had a whole bunch of uh, rushing touchdowns as well. Yeah, he threw 38 touchdowns. Um, red zone. 38. He ended up with I think 40 total touchdowns. I think he had no. It wasn't that. It was something. He was he was over four, like forty four total touchdowns. If you look at his rushing, six touchdowns. Yep, forty four total touchdowns. So yeah, that's the only season I could get that guy to play. All right, Howie, I know Hi. you want to tell us about how you took your team from zero and four and came into the playoffs. Uh, I started winning games. I, I didn't do anything. I, I I went back to my cover two, Tampa two defensive philosophy and didn't make any changes on offense. I didn't, you know, you can only win one game at a time. One win's not worth two. So I just rolled with what I knew and uh, kept my fingers crossed. And I had the potential of going badly. I could have I could have gone 0 and 8, 0 and 9, 1 and 10. Because I was I wasn't gonna make any changes on offense because I knew in the past it worked. But Howie, you said first you four weeks went back to your Tampa two and cover two defense. Were you doing something different before that? Yes, I pl- I played a lot more cover one, and I blitz more than I normally do. Because if you go to one of my safeties, go to my safeties here. Um, Buck Hamptons. No. Crot. No. No. Nevers. No. Get out. Close Bryce Buckley down and just go down my my to my my cornerbacks. Let's close him out. Oh, let me hold on. All right, here's your cornerbacks opened up. No, that's my safety. Close him. Not him. Who the I, hell is that? I don't have anyone open. Uh, hold on. I'm closing your screen down and going to mine. And I'll tell you. Uh, yeah, so Mario Whalen, who's hurt. I um I played him. For the first couple of games in the um, as the nickelback, and I thought, oh, perfect with this eighty man to man and the seventy two zone defense and the one one three personnel, I'll try doing some more stuff. And I'll run some cover one. Um, I'll blitz a little bit more, and I got torched playing cover one. So I went back to he still played. Um, I think actually I might have moved him over to to corner with the man defense and put Gus Barton back in and just went to cover two. And lo and behold, I stopped giving up all sorts of huge yardage plays and got the scoring in check a little bit. I was very pleased to see that he was injured for our game, Howie. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. I had the injury bug at the end of the year. He was out. Um, uh... My my defensive tackle, uh, Dominic Floor, is out with a concussion. Um, a couple other guys were out. My guard didn't play because he's out, which I think really is what killed me more than anything else is the fact that um, that uh, Hart didn't play, and I had to start another another uh, offensive lineman. That just killed my chemistry and my cohesion, and just yeah. decimated my my old line. Yep. So you, I did not have a good feeling going into our game. Yeah, I did not have a good feeling going into our game just just because the offensive line wasn't intact. I think if if Hart's in there starting, 
my yards per carry is a lot higher and my time of possession is a little bit more and maybe you don't get the ball back for that final drive. Yep. You know, instead of going three and out, four and out, I put a drive together and maybe go kick a field goal or keep the ball out of your hands. Yeah, well, the plan was to stop your running backs, and we did that, but I've, you know, I know how Donaldson can play. I mean, sometimes when you can't run the ball, that kid can fucking go off, you know? So yeah. I was a little worried about that. And again, our pass rush sucked. We didn't, I don't think we had maybe one hurry, two sacks. It was just, it was terrible. So it's, it is, it's, it, it, it has taken me several seasons to, to get a series of game plans that I, I like to use. Um, where it's very, they're all very heavily run slanted. You know, I think the, the, the lowest run percentage I have in some of these game plans is like 60% first down and 60% in first and first in possession versus 60% um, first and 10. So sometimes it's 70%, sometimes it's 80%, 80, 60, 80, 70, 60, 80. Um, so I know teams stack the box and they run a lot of buzz. So I've got a very good combination of running, but also like medium to long passing. So if teams want to buzz me, well, then I'm going to take my shots downfield. And if I'm only getting three yards of carry, Donaldson's going to be throwing for 300 yards because he's throwing deep. And it's worked the last couple of years. And every now and then, every now and then I, I, I get, you know, shut out or I get, uh, I get blown out because I don't match up well with their safeties and they're a little bit more talented than your average team, but I don't, I don't change anything. The one thing that uh, I took from the zone, uh, God, maybe two years time now, real time, is he was talking about game planning. Where things don't work, you have a game plan. You go in and you change this and you change that, and that doesn't work. So the next week you go in and change this and change that, and that doesn't work. Then you change this and that. And then before you know it, you're like, your, your game plan looks nothing like <laughs> what it once did because you've changed it, tinkered it too much. <laughs> yep. So I found what I – you know, I found what works, and if I find a game plan where I score 45 points, if I made a new one, I save it. And then I'll run with that, and that'll go into the rotation. If I score, you know, 28 points, 34 points with that game plan, that gets saved, and it's one that I'll put in a rotation. And if it was an anomaly where, you know, maybe I scored 30 points one game, and then the next three or four times I roll it out, five times I roll it out, I score 10 points or 14. All right, well, Let's just toss that one out and we'll start over again. So I'm up to eight or you know eight or nine game plans now where I can, if I'm in a hurry and don't have time to game plan, I'll just you know offensively I'll just plug one of those in and then spend most of my time game planning defense. I like. Well, you turned around your team, got into the playoffs. That's for sure. It, yeah, it, and the only one that didn't predict me to to, to win was Jugs. Yes. Are you sure? Yes. He's right. Yeah. You all picked me. Yep. Well, who'd you pick? Me. Grim picked me. Clay picked me. I I kind of remember Jugs, Jugs picked- saying he's going to do the same thing, though, with what he knows. Like I said, I thought that many would go with most of the people that were consistently winning in those divisions. That would have been you. I'm, I'm surprised he didn't. Uh, well, Howie, you didn't, you didn't pick me. No, I, I would. I wouldn't. I, I and no, our, I listen. I, I was. I, I wouldn't have picked me either. Like I'm not holding against Jugs. I wouldn't have picked me. I would I, have picked. I would have picked Cap City. Well, I knew they weren't going to do shit. They come out of the gates every year four four and one or something like that. And he went four and one and then lost every single game afterwards. I picked Outer Banks, and I said that Cap City would fall apart, and they did. Okay. And I also I also made my prediction right on Moontown. You mean going two and thirteen? That he'd have the first overall pick. Yes. Does anybody ever talk to that guy? Or hear no. from him? No, no, I think I think he just um he'll get on the forum. But I I've never texted him or anything like that. That's what no. you're asking. And the first sign of trouble was when he took over the team, he switched the team name from the Darksiders to the Illuminati. Well, he 
comes in last, but he needed that first round pick to help his team. Well, we'll see what happens next season. All right, next up, NC East. We have um, Frederick, 13 and 2 and 1. Williamsburg, Ugrim, 8 and 8. Chesapeake, 8 and 8. And Brooklyn, 5 and 10 and 1. Um, I'm shocked Brooklyn's at the bottom again. I thought he would have a better record. Grim, I thought you would be taking the division. That's what I picked. Frederick has a crazy passing game, which he has 526 points per game. I mean, uh, for the season. And we knew uh, Quick had that rookie quarterback, so we knew he wasn't going to be in the division. That's how it played out for me. Yeah, I'm, I think I picked Frederick. In fact, I'm sure I picked Frederick. But uh, yeah, he's 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 just. I mean, you know, everyone talks about that that, that passing attack and you know Basky and the wide receivers and shit and the fact that he's not running Reeves at all. But fucking solid defense, man, through and through. Really solid defense. I mean, he's number four overall, number three in points allowed. So I mean, uh, you know. Not only do you have to fucking deal with that passing attack, but you, you can't do shit on his fucking defense. I mean, he whooped my ass twice this year. Yeah, his defense, 287 points allowed. Hmm? He went 9-2-1 and one in the conference. Um, win nine games, win streak he had. 6-0 in the division. And... You're right, Grim. His defense has been dominating. Look at look at it here. Uh, rushing yards. He's number five, so you can't even rush on him. His completion, if you try to pass on him, he's 53%. Yards per yeah. attempt is number one. He only allows 5.58 yards per attempt. Yep. The only problem was the turnovers, but that's, you know, when Baskey's throwing, you know, However many. He allows 17.9 points per game. He's ranked number three in that. But he puts yep. up 32 points, point nine. So 30, almost 33 points per game he puts up. Yep, it was a damn good season. And then you, Grim, who we had coming in at first. Let's get your team up. Ugh. What do you mean, ugh? Dude, it was such a fucking bipolar season. I mean, after fucking, after Bob did what he did to me, I just, I didn't want to play anymore. I mean, it <laughs> took, it took me, you know, well, that actually the two games. So Chicago coming to my house and killing me 33 to fucking three. That was bad enough. Then I go at Harlem where I think I might have a little fucking chance, but 112 yards total. That was my offense, 100 fucking 12 yards. It's like at that point, I just considered giving up and not even exporting anymore. Just saying, Four fuck it. Downs, I was like, what? What is yeah. this? I couldn't believe it. Yeah, we were just so bad for that. I mean, it started with the the uh, the loss at home to Moontown. I mean, fucking embarrassing. Just fucking embarrassing. You know, and then I have to go at Frederick, and I get stomped 49 to 25. You know? It's just like, and that stretch of games. And then Rochester at home, I didn't play well then either. Then we hit the Chicago and the game with Bob. And, you know, I was talking with fucking Chris. And I think, I think Jugs maybe even. I'm just like, I'm fucking done. It's like, no, you know, no, you're not. You're fucking just fucking keep going. Keep oh, going. How many I'm times like, have I said that? Who's ever thought? Me? I'm done with this goddamn game. Yep. <laughs> yes. We get your text. Like, we will get your text, Red Zone. Uh -huh. Yes. Yep. But no, Maybe I, just, I should just step down because I sure ain't any good at this shit anymore. God damn it. Yeah. So, <laughs> but then, you know, then we got to Chesapeake. And I'm just like, all right, fuck it, dude. Just, you know, get in there. Fucking game plan. Let's fucking go. And I whooped his ass at his place. And I beat him earlier in the season. So it's always nice we can beat Chesapeake <laughs> twice. Then I had MPL at home and I wasn't really worried about them. And then, you know, I knew we weren't going to do shit against Frederick at home either. So. But yeah, just a fucking bipolar team. Worcester couldn't run, but uh, 
I mean, he ran, but still, 3.73 yards, that's not what you want to see. He fumbled, fucking fumbled nine times. We had 27 total fumbles all year because when Hayes gets fucking sacked, or Hastings gets sacked, he's just dumping the ball on the ground. But, yeah, my uh, starting center, well, he was out for this game, which is uh, why I was surprised that Worcester even ran at all. But he got injured for four weeks earlier on, and when he's out, we just Worcester can't fucking run. And Worcester also tanked a bunch of points this year, too. So he might be, I mean, he might be on his way out. I think I've ran to the ground enough. Yeah, outside of that, you know, I had to uh, do a bunch of, I never have to do cap outs. So I'm, I might be a little cap screwed next year. Um, yeah, what am I? Yeah, I'm three, three over. Well, look three at Three million? No, I bad. should uh, no, I should have three million in cap space. I was going to say, either way, that's nothing, dude. Just... I know, but I've never been in that position. I've always been able to do this shit, but I had to cap out a bunch of people because I had to sign Bill Hamilton. Don't and then do it. I re I resign him, and he has the worst season of his fucking career. It's like fucking go figure. Seven fucking sacks. It's like, dude, you're supposed to be my beast. But he also went down in ratings this year too. One of the things I do every now and then when it works, it doesn't always work. Is you, you know, let's say you have four big time free agents that, you know, I don't know, big time. I mean, they're important to you, to your team. Okay. You can't lose four starters. I mean, Jesus Christ, what are we going to do? You pick one and you sacrifice him and use his money to resign the other. Yep. It can, it can be effective depending on. You know, the team and the age of the players, but that's one way. I wouldn't get into a bunch of cap outs, so you're just asking for trouble later on and get worse and worse. And then yeah. this offseason, I got to figure out how to re sign Jordan Bernstein, my cornerback. So I don't know. He might just be one of those guys that just plays out his contract. No, I had to, I had to make, that, um, make that decision with two of my DNs. You know, Max McDaniel at last year and yep. the other guy that I treated it to Clay. I couldn't keep both of them. Yeah. And in I the end, that. I and in the end I, I let McDaniel play out his contract, didn't re sign him, and then I ended up bringing him back in God, when did I sign him again? Free season? Yeah, Training because camp maybe. Right, because I couldn't hold on to him. I only played him for a year. Yes? Yeah. He did well. Yep. So yeah, he was solid defensive end. I had two solid DNs for the longest time and couldn't keep them. Well, I kept them for, for a, a couple of cycles, but the last one I couldn't. He yeah. actually improved my defense um, last season. Boy, he helped with it. Yeah, but uh, that uh, strong safety I got, that Grant Eisenbart there, I think he's – going to be a good player for years to come. And it's finally finally nice to have a fucking guy that can play strong fucking safety because I haven't had a good one since uh, Bryce and Wayne started fucking going down like four or five seasons ago. Nice. In five, ratings, so. five interceptions. Yep. A pass defense of 82.7. Very nice. Yeah. I mean, he's not, a, he's not yeah. an affinity at all, but I think, you know, if he can hold those bars, <laughs> I think we're going to have something there for years to come. If he gives you pass defense of 82 or plus, plus five interceptions, do you really care about affinity? No. No, absolutely not. Like I said, when I go into the draft and there's a position that I need and there's somebody there that I can get, I don't give a fuck if he's an affinity or not. I mean, I'll try to make sure he's, you know, not a conflict if I can. But, you know, even – even I, I don't think I've had a conflict on my team in since I started playing this game. Mm -hmm. But uh, – mm -hmm. But yeah, no affinities. Like, if there's a need, to, first round for me, that's I don't care. I don't care if you're an affinity or fucking not. If you're a good player, I need you on my team. You're coming. After that, uh, the later rounds is always when I try to just concentrate on getting the affinity guys. I'm shocked now going to Brooklyn that he has an um, that he dropped off for some reason. I know he's frustrated too. I saw him chime in on the forum. Well, I don't. Cushman I don't think year. this was supposed to happen this way. I mean, he got. 
Cushman, he made the playoffs in his first year, won the division at 10 and six. And then this is now the fifth season that he hasn't made the playoffs. He was four and 12 last year, one and 15 the year before. So he's been steadily getting worse when, I mean, this is Cushman's twilight years, man. He should have been playing way fucking better. And actually, he played he looked, well. He didn't play, he didn't play bad. 37 touchdowns, 19 interceptions, passing rating of 91.1. 5,300, almost 5,400 yards passing, and yards per attempt, 8.01. I'll see, and that's why he was saying in the forums that he wanted to come on the show, so we got to set up a Saturday one so he can explain what happened to his team the last four years, because I'd like to fucking see it. Absolutely. I think next Saturday, I'd like to Saturday hear coming, I believe, I have to check. I might have off if I'm not doing this birthday brunch thing. If I'm not, I'll definitely ask these guys if they want to do one Saturday. Yeah, or maybe even the next week, because that would put us at a draft review then. You know, mm -hmm. those are always fun. True. Well, he's been working on his defense, or trying to anyway. That's why he traded down and traded out of all those picks a couple seasons ago. Yes. His defense has given up 28.6, so he's ranked – last in points allowed. That would get you a record of um, 5 and 10. Yeah, no. These defense was just piss poor this year. And just like Tony said, he doesn't have a bad defense. You know, he's got some really start solid starters back there. But, you know, also how many, how many, yeah, how many first round picks did he trade for Cushman? Three, was it? Oh, I don't know. So remember right after that, he had three seasons without a first-round pick. See, that's what we were talking about. When you make this pick to get a player, that means you're on the cusp of going to the bowl or dominating, we should say. If that player doesn't work out for you or it doesn't get you over that hump, it puts you back years. Because of, like you just said, you don't have those three first-round picks anymore. Yeah, but I think at the time of the trade, I could see why I was doing it. I mean, Ron Ellard was young, younger. You know, Cushman was only 33. Oh, I'm not saying it's a bad trade. Not yeah, at all. Yeah. I'm just well, saying if you miss where that one player isn't the main thing to get you over the hump. You're He's had three years seven. since. To pick in the first round and that pieces of parts to make you know, the best yep. rest of the team. He's been there six years. Yep. No, so, and he got that really great guard this year. I think it's a curse. I think it's Cursible. a Cushman curse. It's a Cushman, <laughs> Cushman curse. curse. Cushman curse. <laughs> yeah. uh, no shit. Okay. <laughs> That's you not do okay. shit in Fort Wayne either. So. I think it's the a Cushman drafting curse. a guard at 111 curse. Wow. I mean, there's... I'd take an 82-rated guard at 11. Get I'd take out an 82-rated. He tears an ACL I, and he'll drop 20 points. Ah. Oh, wow. Ly Lyman don't tear their ACLs. Come on, they're in the trenches. He's got 12 weeks with an ACL damage and a knee injury right now. That's bullshit. Go pull him up, CJ Bernstein. <laughs> Who are you talking about? Bernstein, that guy on IR. No, I, 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 I believe Bob. I just, I'm just giving you a hard time. Yeah, you like doing that, don't you? Yeah. I, I draft an eighty. I would draft an eighty-seven rated guard, the top five. What about you, Judge? Where would you? If, oh, Judge, would you take would. a? Did we lose Judge? I'm here. Like what was that? Would you take an 82 rated guard at 111? Yeah, I've taken one at like 1.7 or 1.8 before. Yeah, that's what I said. I'd, I'd take that guy, you know, that guy in a heartbeat, top 10, top five. I mean, if there's if there's not a 65 rated wide receiver or 65 rated quarterback there or in my case, a 60-plus a, a rated running back, why wouldn't you take a, a lineman that's 80-rated there? I'd be, I'd be looking DB first. 
and then maybe linebacker second. Mm. And I'd look at it. I'd look at I D mean, line. Yeah, as much but O line. Yeah, but there, there. I mean, there've been some drafts that we've had recently that just been flat out awful for skill position players. True. Yep. In which case, you have to adjust. BPA, I guess. And, and then Clay, going back to what you were talking earlier about um, about Cushman and trading away, you know, three first round picks, and you know that's your future. There's there's ways to make up for that. Sure. Right. Like. Well, I I traded away when I traded away three or four picks to get uh, uh, to to get the number one pick to draft Vital. Is I looked at the the cap numbers like all right, so this is how much money I would have had to designate to rookies in my first round draft pick that I don't have anymore. So I would go and overpay for players that I knew would be impactful that maybe weren't necessarily worth the money, but filled the need at and the could time replace that, that first round pick that right and 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 when i say overpaid not overpaid for their talent but overpaid to make sure that i got the guy that i wanted i you felt know, like you know i it's okay so i need to get it i don't have a first round draft pick my number one need is going to be a tackle everybody's you know offering this guy 11 million dollars a year I'm going to go in and offer him $16 million a year and make it all bonus and, you know, give myself a better chance of landing him. And boom, you know, now the, uh, the ninth year offensive tackle is now my first round draft pick, you know, and he slides right in there. I totally follow what you're saying. I do. You let him play three years and walk as a free agent. And you're three years of first and round walk picks as a free agent when you get the draft pick. I've always said this. Yep. GMs make trades because they're going to pick a player in their mind who they believe is going to make their team better and get to the bowl, period. And so that's what everyone does. I will pay X amount to get a certain wide receiver or X amount to get a certain quarterback. I will do that. Or a defensive tackle. I don't mind that. I know red zone gives me shit about it, but because I, I feel I, just like to mess with you play. I know and that's what I mean by that <laughs> and then I feel that that player will help my team um so I think that's why jinx you. Yeah, it same thing work. I just like to mess with you because you don't believe in jinx but the Cushman I believe that there's a there's a there's a curse on Cushman well wait there's no such thing as jinxes but there's such a thing as curses no oh, there see isn't. I had there it wrong there isn't there. I had it wrong <laughs> that, that sounds a little bit uh Hmm. In any event, um, <laughs> going back to what Howie was saying, Howie, I, I agree with what you're saying. Yes. Um, if you gave up your picks and you don't have a first round and you need a certain player, you'll pay that extra cost to get that player because that player is necessary to have on your team to make yourself get to the top. Yep. Agree. Now we're in. Um... Oh wait, wait a second. So Chesapeake. Yes. Do you think? Do we all agree that it's just the rookie quarterback, or do you, does anyone think there's a deeper issue on that team? No, no. Well, there's no deeper issue on that team. Um, like what, Grim? I, I'm just. It was just a question. I, I'm. I'm thinking it's just the rookie quarterback and the fact that he's not an affinity. Which but he one didn't. Of he didn't play bad, though, you know, not not for a rookie anyways. Which one of us wouldn't want to take that rookie quarterback off his hands if that was the problem, was dragging his team down? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'd take him. Well, I'd totally take that guy off his hands. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but that, that, I, I guess I'd, I'd, trade, <laughs> I'd trade three first-round picks for him right now. Yep. Uh, no, I guess no my, questions asked. That, that was the question then. I mean, do we think Quick's problem this year was the rookie quarterback or – is there anything else that made him fall to eight and eight? And I can't really see any other I think reason. It's, uh, I think it's a combination of the fact that it's a rookie quarterback and it's a rookie quarterback that's not an affinity. Yeah, because look at his um, points per game on his defense. His defense a lot only twenty four points. His offense only put up twenty two. So he's he's at the cusp, and that really, the reason why he put up only twenty two points per game is because his quarterback. 
the question is that mm-hmm. I'd like to know, and I hope um, Quick can answer this on the forum. If someone offered Quick three first round picks for him, would I he bet he trade would do it. I bet he would. He can't trade him. He can't trade him. He doesn't oh, have right. anybody he to behind yeah, him. Yeah, he doesn't have anybody yep. be, even close to him behind him. Yep. No, There's let's say he, he had a <laughs> he, he was able to get a, a fifty five rated quarterback. Would he trade this guy, the future of his team? Do you think? Knowing quick. I want to hear your guy's opinion on this. I believe he would. I think he'd go draft three more affinities. He think he thinks in his mind, and I agree with him. I've seen him do it too many times. He can go find somebody else. I disagree. We'll find out. I disagree. I'll offer, I'll offer him three first round picks and, and Donaldson and see if he takes it. He's already said after getting that last quarterback. What was who was the last quarterback he had? Bolitnikov. He already said after having Bolitnikov that he he undervalued the importance of a of a QB. Remember that? Yep. He yep, did say absolutely. that. So he's not giving this guy up. I still no. think with this guy not being an affinity, and he's still a rookie going into year two, yeah, Sebastian Donaldson and three first would probably get him out. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I don't think he'd do it. I'm with Tony. I'm absolutely with Tony. He's, he's not trading this guy. And I'll be right back, gentlemen. I think you should try it, Howie. Um, Jugs, <laughs> what do you think? Um, I, I think the guy he has would have to have a bad season or two for him to even consider trading him. Cause he's that into cohesion. I don't think the cohesion makes that much of a difference. He's not a conflict. His, the, the cohesion goes by the position group just because he doesn't have a two or three. No, we're talking double cohesion, or not chemistry. That quarterback isn't hurting him. We're talking cohesion though, not chemistry. Oh, chemistry. Well, I mean, he's only been on a team one year. So you're not losing anything trading him? Let me, because um, Juggs doesn't have the screen up. He's scheduled, he's a 39 rated now, scheduled to be, based upon my scout, 75. So 60 to 70 rated quarterback he might end up to be. Would he trade this guy for three first round picks? I, I think he would need to have a bad season and he would already have to have a quarterback in place or be getting somebody back who is 60-ish rated that may be like a double or triple affinity for him. Yeah, Donaldson, I'm only seeing 47 overall. That might not be in Yeah, I got Donaldson's rated. I see him a little bit higher than that. I see Donaldson at 54. Well... In either case, he had a 10-point drop last year. Whatever the numbers were, they, they dropped the same amount. That's probably, at age 31, not something you can do. Really? Hold on. Did you see Donaldson is dropping? I see Donaldson dropping. I'm just one of the late scout. 57 to 47. Hold on. Let me. Now, if your scout's seven points better than the league scout, okay, then he went from 64 to 54. But he's still had a 10-point drop. Yeah. You can't you can't say what the what the player's doing by the league scout. That's that's never accurate. Okay, well hang on. Let's let's like go we've had, we we've had this discussion before. Yeah, I mean I'm looking at league, unless the league scout is good, you can't go by what the league scout shows you. And the league scout is very rarely good. Well, Schultz, he's he's right smack dab in the middle of the pack. Like his 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 scouting is right in the middle, just a tad over the middle. So I'd say he's better than the average league scout we've had over the years. He's a shit ton better than the one we had before, and a shit ton better than Buddy. Okay, Freeman. but it's Okay, but is he better than the majority of the scouts that are in the league itself that that are that are part of the team? I would say he's probably better than thirty percent of them. Maybe. 
don't know. I gotta I'd have to go back and look at the offensive coordinators for for the league. I mean, I've had I've had I've had the league scouts sometimes show that a player's dropped anywhere from eight to twelve points. And my players stayed the exact same. So let's see. Here. Eight out doesn't mean anything. Well, we talked about we talked about that the last show too about how he I I've been overlooking his scouts. Yeah, well, that wide receiver. Yep. But um, if you look at most of his two, drafting skills over the last few seasons, he's had very high scouts. Three an offensive coordinator. Four. Five, six, seven, eight. Don't mind my counting. Nine, ten. I bet you he's 11, using his fucking fingers too. Twelve. Well, now you. he ran out of. <laughs> now he ran out of fingers. fingers. <laughs> It'll take even longer now. Yep. <laughs> so twelve out of tw- he's he is the league scout is as good or better. Than twelve uh, offensive coordinators. So what? What is that? That's about. Yeah, what's that? Thirty percent. Yep. Yeah, thirty thirty eight percent. Yeah. Okay. I know that's, I'm gonna. That's all I got. So I'm I'm gonna be sorry for saying this. And I hate disagreeing with Judd, but you're telling me that your scout, give, let's give your scout a rating of what? 70? Okay. And the league's got a rating of 60. So there's a 10 point difference in what they see. So you're telling me not only is your guy going to see the player at 57 when I see him, when, when the league's got season at 47, but there's also a variable in the difference between how much he drops. I don't think the game's that complicated. I think if he dropped 10, he dropped 10. Whether he was at 64 and went to 54 or whether he was at 54 and went to 44, I think a 10-point drop is a 10-point drop. That's not true. That's, that's uh, simply not true. I, I, you can, like I you, said, and I, you can post it in the forum and ask. you can ask Ben, you can ask Mac Powell. That's they'll tell us because they'll hear the show. They've already been on the show talking about it. Uh, okay. That's part of the reason why I know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's part of the reason why I know that's true. Then I need to go Ben's already to that said show. that multiple times. <laughs> I I, I've, I've, that I've learned over the past year to never fucking question Jugs about anything because he's always been right. He's always fucking right. Well, I, I think you're asking a lot for a game to oh, run which... penalties three times in a row before I another, run another play to have that kind of variance in scouting. Uh, which, which reminds me, I, I wanted to say this to Jug now that he's on. Um, going back to your comments you made <clears throat> after I bailed on the last show about how you still have no idea how Mouthball does the drafting thing because you've listened to that show like a dozen times and you're no better. I'm in the exact same boat. I think I've put that thing on and put it in my earphones and listened to it and watched it easily eight times and I'm no better drafting now than I was when I started, I don't think. Yeah. Although, although you do have Cameron DeWatt on your team. Yeah. Hard to argue with that. <laughs> Blind squirrels find nuts. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he was using his sense of smell. Yeah, dice rolls too, right? <laughs> dice, dice rolls? Yeah, okay. I, 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 I told them. I said the only reason why I even looked at that wide receiver is because is because Ben and somebody else was like, hey, I want your pick right now. And I knew there's there's got to be a wide out. Yep. And it was between him and somebody else, and I literally, like, I flipped the coin and said, I'm going with this guy. I, I love your answer it. there. I love that answer. You have the balls to look around and say, you know what? I think it's this guy. If I'm wrong, I'm willing to eat that bit. But I'm not yeah. giving it away. I'm taking it. I love that answer. Yeah. Love it. Do you guys think that there are certain GMs can pick a certain position always well? For instance, um, and I'm going to use you as an example, Jugs. Like, Jugs can pick offense alignment. And he won't hit, he won't never miss on offense alignment, but other positions he will. And let's say uh, Howie can hit on wide receivers and, and, and Grimm can hit on tight ends. Are there certain GMs that you guys look at that can always hit on a certain position, but other positions they're fucking 
awful. Have you noticed? That? I'm pretty good at spotting at spotting running backs. I, I'm I'm very good at spotting running backs because I I know what I need to find to for my running back to be successful on my team. There's only three or four bars that I really look for. Well, that's probably so, a big so part of the running answer. back has those. I can find that running back in the fourth or fifth round most times. He's not going to be a stud, but I can find a productive guy in the fourth or fifth round. I still need to get the stud in the first. And I should reword it that way, that you find that player at that one position that you're good at that fits your system. And Red Zone, you're correct on that. That that would be how I would phrase it. That's probably the best way to answer your question. You, got, you mm-hmm. take a player like Juggs who runs the ball and plays defense and knows what the traits are, the bars are, you know, what, what he needs in players to do those things well, and it's been a winning formula, so he knows who to go get. Ask Juggs to build a pass happy team that's going to throw the ball 900 times a year. He might not have all the answers there. Same thing, ask Tzak how to run the ball. You know, maybe he knows, maybe he doesn't. But you know, what you're doing right now, if it's successful, you're going to have a little advantage at least. Agree. However, I've seen teams that can do something well, but they don't have the right players sometimes. So it's not always guarantee. Well, if they're doing something well, they have the right players, or they wouldn't be doing well. Right? Right. However, the player that they need for the position I'm speaking of, like if I said offensive lineman, you're, you're, you're a great run team, and you need to pick offensive lineman that can run block. Sometimes you miss on that. But there are teams that can always hit on that, no matter what. When they're picking late in the round. Top 10 picks, you're always, like Jug says, you're usually going to get a good player. But if you're picking deep in the round, can you always, or second and third round, are you picking up good players in those rounds? Well, I'll go look at Harlem and look at right guard Efrain Horner. Efrain Horner, got him. Fifth round, pick 30. Didn't play well as a rookie. Didn't start out real well last season, but finished pretty strong. Yeah, only had one sack, 43 he'll start, block. He'll, he'll start next year. All right. Will we set league records for key run blocks or you know, make 18 Pro Bowls and win the Hall of Fame? Maybe not, but I'll bet he's an effective right guard. All right, Jugs, we're in your division. He I had know. to just take off, guys. He just texted me. Oh, that okay. sucks. Yeah, he's got to pick up a client. <laughs> oh, that's right. He's working tonight. Yep. yep. Okay. Well, he came in at eight seven one. Fairbanks at six and ten. Colorado five and eleven, and Hanalei at three and thirteen. Now, Colorado's quarterback. We talked about this last time. How did he finish up, Roy? Let's see. Because he was, uh, wow, 26 interceptions. That's terrible. That killed his team. Yeah, I don't know. He he got Dwayne Yellup off, uh, out of free agency, spent a lot of money on him. and He only I'd... put up 16 points per game. Offense. What's more frightening is that Yellup only put up 693 yards, and he's got Diaz. Diaz is a good quarterback. I don't, I don't know what the fuck happened to them this year. Diaz I mean, really they'll, screwed him. They, yeah, I mean, Jug said it. His whole division collapsed this year. I mean, everyone was fucking bad, even his team. You know, not definitely not up to Jug standards. You know. See, but isn't that a case? I don't know who agrees or disagrees, but if that's my team, I'm just calling that season. You know that. Forget about it. We're going into the next season. Diaz is still my QB. Based on what he's done prior to that, Yeah, I'm not worried. I'm just moving forward. We're, we're rolling it right back out like uh, Tony said. Yo. Tony, would you roll him back out or would you dump him and go get somebody else? It's I, would roll, Diaz. I would roll him right back out there. Yep. Forget 26 interceptions. That was a bad season. Yeah, I, I think, I think um, 
you know, when I, when I see that, I always wonder, you know, as a GM, am I, am I asking too much of that guy of the quarterback? Do I need to run the ball a little bit more? Do I need better receivers? Do I need, you know, I don't necessarily see the quarterback as necessarily the problem. If he's, if he's throwing interceptions and is it, uh, avoid interception is, is decent. I look at, you know, what are the other factors? Yeah. It, but I, I probably hold on to, to quarterbacks longer than I should. <laughs> That's just me. I try to make it work with them. Yeah. I kind of do the same thing. I probably yeah, don't hold got, on to long enough. He's got all the bars that I would be looking for. He's a short pass style which I like. Uh, he's got a high accuracy, which I like. He can scramble a little bit. You know, he can, he can scramble on third and one and convert. He can, he can read the defense. So he won't be thrown into double coverage. I mean, third down bar isn't bad. Yeah. That's rush isn't bad. And the screen pass is high, which for some reason, there are a lot of people that like having that bar high on QB. I'm looking at short and medium usually, but that goes into it too. Did he get did he get hurt? No, he started sixteen games. No, yeah. he just had a bad year. Yeah, I think just and I mean just he had a pretty year. bad year, I'll give you that. I just don't think I'd run from him. Yeah, I just I don't get it. I mean Heiser is solid on both sides of the ball on this team. Yes. And he was just I mean I think you just go draft and just yeah, his his offense right out there. was number thirty at sixteen point one yards per game. His total defense was 31. I mean, that's just – that's not like his team because he's got some really good guys on his defense. And he's got his 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 receivers, most of them have pretty good route running. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't panic if I was him. No, I think, yeah, it's just got to be an off year. I think he'll be right back in the mix next year. Yeah, chalk it up to an enigma, yes. I would think so. Dice rolls. Yeah, dice rolls. There you go. <laughs> you have Fairbanks who um, came in at 6 and 10. Does he have – he has a rookie. Oh, his rookie um, is not this guy. It's um, this guy here. That's a, It's his second season. He turned out better than I thought he would. As far as his – Yeah, did he uh, – His bars – he might have went up this year. Clay, click yeah. on the scouting quick. So did he go? To... Yeah, he came, he came up big. Well, I guess not big, but but still, that's it's doable. He's a he's a playable guy. Mm-hmm. But he didn't. Yeah, what, I, what, I, what I like the most about this guy is. Um... He, accuracy, sense rush, read defense, but that two minute offense. Um, he's going to get a lot of late comebacks and and late heroics with that two minute offense bar. You know, I never thought of that, Haynes, about what you said. Yep, that, that comeback part. Yeah, you don't want to go against a guy like this because you can your team can do everything right. And you're, you know, three points or seven points or, you know, ten points ahead, and this guy will come back and and beat you. His running game was very good as well, but he's 29 years old. Um, have almost... you really seen that that bar have that kind of impact on? Well, in single player, yeah. There you go. Yeah, I'm not sure I've seen that. I, maybe I'm just missing it, not looking yeah. for it, but. Well, Fairbanks Woe started when he traded Liam Shields. He traded Liam Shields to Paris, and he went we to Paris. We talked about that just, last, yeah, yeah, just, last show or two. Just ripping off. Now, that, I'm not saying that that trade is why he started sucking, but he you know, he had Relford, and he has Shields, and why not trade one of them? You know, I agree with it, but it just seems like as soon as Shields left the team, yeah. you, no, down he no, goes. But he um, okay, but his rushing game, he's got 404 carries, 2,036 yards, Five yards per carry, eight touchdowns. He just needs to get the touchdowns up, but his running game is still there. He's got a three-headed monster going. Yeah, yeah, he does, actually. So here's my question. 
and, and we're not going to know till somebody goes and pulls up the team statistics and goes back a couple of years. Mm-hmm. When the season that he really came out, played lights out and made the playoffs two seasons ago. Yeah. Was he passing more or running more? Because I see 640 attempts and 404 well, rushing attempts. And I yeah, bet he, you he was going the direct is, opposite. He, he was throwing the ball. He was throwing a ball then too. Well, he had uh, he had uh, two Washington. running backs that were running for a thousand. No, yards. when he won the division at twelve and four in twenty one seventeen, he had Washington at quarterback for thirty seven hundred yards, and Wesley Relford ran for thirteen hundred yards. And who the I other, believe Shields the other was back Shields was on the team back then as well too. But didn't he have a lot of? Didn't he have a couple of tight ends? I seem to remember him running the ball with a two headed monster, kind of like Jugs does. And that's yeah, he I was with Relford and Shields. Well, that's not a 640 to 404 split. He's totally changed his offense then. Well, did you see the amount of targets the fullback got? Uh, wow. Close, that down, close down Relford there. Holy cow. What are you doing? 114. Why? Well, was nine play- touchdowns is he- isn't bad. Well, but also, too, is he, is he, is he playing that fullback as one of the tight ends in the one of the in one of the two oh, or three tight ends. Okay, but I don't care. He's got a forty-one route bar. Yeah, we're... I don't think you can no, put he's a playing... tight end. You can't put a tight end in. Uh, I mean, a fullback in a tight end spot. Yes, yes you can. can. I do it all the time. Sure, you can. Uh, I thought I thought you can put the tight end into a running back nope. spot. Both both ways, but he's, he's clearly playing play fullback. The, play a fullback. Oh, you know why? I don't have fullbacks on my team, so it doesn't That's give me right. an option. That's why. With, with a 41 route bar, why is he getting? You know, Clay, your team value will go up if you have a fullback on your team. 114 targets with a 41 route bar. Yeah, I didn't realize his route running was only 41. And it would make sense if, if his route runs like, like, you know, north of 60. Um, yeah. I mean, th- those targets should be going to Relford or Green. Or a wide receiver. That fullback. Wow. And you want to talk about Straczynski throwing interception. You want to know why he might be throwing interceptions? Because he's throwing to a fullback who's playing out of position at tight end and has a 41 route bar. He's not playing out of position, and I don't think. Maybe he's, he's playing, I mean, maybe. on the on his roster page, he's showing him starting that fullback. Maybe he's okay. playing him um... – well, you might what's, be doing it at 122. Yeah, that's uh, what I was That saying. wouldn't show up. Yeah. yeah, I suppose. Your roster page shows you 212, but, I mean, you know, he could be playing there 113 for all we know. But, dude, he's tiny. You don't – 5'11", 236, you don't I start that guy at tight end. He's using, <laughs> he's using the fullback as a uh, as a red zone target. That's why he has nine TDs. Okay, well, that's great, but 114 targets and – 19 TDs and 20 picks, it didn't work well enough. But you got to change that plan. Yeah, if your yards per target is only 4.46. It yeah, in, in, in some respects, though, you're, you're screwed, right? So let's say that he's like, hey, this this season I'm going to make a conscientious effort to get the ball out of the fullback. And as you're going through making your game plan, now all of a sudden you've got all these, these primary and secondary reps to your fullback. Once you hit export and training camps over, you're done. That's what you're stuck with. So, you know, if you gamble and make a mistake, or you 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 know you don't realize you put so many in, you, you can't fix it. That's what you that's what you roll with. Maybe right. even that. Who knows? Well, I mean, you if know, you look, that's he, one of those got, things where so you he's know, got you're seven through people season, listed. You're like, oh shit. He's got seven people listed that you know on the, how many people got targets. So he's spreading the ball around. That's good. He's got three backs over 500 yards, and his rushing attacks averaging five yards a carry. That's fine. And he's got a young QB that I still think could turn into something, even though he does have a pretty bad avoiding reception bar. You can build an offense around that. I think if he just took all those fullback plays out, he'd have won another three or four games. Well, what's his quarterback's um, read defense? Straczynski is uh, 69. It could be up to 84. I see 71, 86. I see seven. Do they? Does he have a stud tight end that he that, or a stud wide receiver that you target? Let's see. These are his wide receivers. Let me bring uh, them up. One's forty-two. One's of them are really good. But I can I can confirm. Um, no, I just went through. I just went through a couple of his game logs. That fullback is playing at fullback the entire time. 
So he's okay. throwing passes to the fullback on purpose. Yep. Yeah, you got to scrap that. Go through a log, Grim, real quick. Are there I went through a couple. Are they are they primary receivers or is he the secondary receiver? Uh, he's primary in quite a few of the throws to him. But I was just looking okay. for the uh, one two two or any of those with the two tight ends and all of those he's playing at fullback. So he plays think, a lot of two o three, which I would think would get you some fucking. Some I think what Tony said is right. You know, he's using him. He wants to use him in the red zone, which is why he has nine TDs, which is great. But 114 times, I don't think that he used him too many other places. He doesn't have wide receivers, guys. No, he doesn't. No, his his highest route running um, wide receiver is, I think, a 53. His tight end isn't all world either. He's got the 100 get downfield, but only 38 route run. Yeah. His... I'll be right back, James. Good. So he doesn't have Howie wide receivers. He doesn't have a tight end. And his running back isn't much no, better, if any better, of a receiving threat than the fullback. So who are you going to throw the ball to? Well, he should, yeah, he, should, play. he should do what um, Oakland does, what Juggs does, and uh, how he does. He's got good running backs. He's got three good running backs that just smash through everybody. Well, like I said, 640 in pass attempts, 404 in rushing attempts. That's not what he did when he had that great season. He had those two running backs. He's changed his offense completely around ever since he traded Liam, what's his name? Shields. Yeah. He's got the running game going for him. His, he doesn't have yeah. the players for his passing game. Yeah. yeah. So he needs to bang on the running game more. Correct. Yeah, he has some good backs and, and a good offensive line. It's interesting. I wonder... At 1-2, he picked up this quarterback. Were there at the time wide receivers that he could have taken at 1-2? Do you guys remember? I'm looking at it now. I remember. Roman Randall went number three to Mass Luis. He's now 59 overall. What season? Drop running, 72 get downfield, yeah. and 93 big play. He had 1,500 yards and 8 TEs this past season. So, yeah, there was a receiver right there right after him. You know what? I can look myself here for us. Um Amateur draft. What season was that again? 2019. Twenty one nineteen. Just pick just click on his name on the player card. You can click where he was it says league draft. Got it right. right up. Yeah, so he could have picked up him. <clears throat> Roman Randall. What's the next guy? Um Colorado. Bobby Dellis? No. He didn't turn out. Um Tucker's guy, but he, I don't know if he would have saw what Tucker. Yeah, he might not have seen him as Francis. I didn't. So it would just. Jim got him at, at what? What? What pick? One. Twenty. Twenty-eight. Yep. Twenty-eight. Yes. <laughs> 28. So you're playing in a league, and you got this guy in your conference. Some of you guys don't have to worry about this, but I do. Okay, and and not only is he picking sixty-one wide overall uh, wide receivers. But he's doing it at 128. Right. Makes you lay awake in bed at night staring at the ceiling. Beat this motherfucker. You're not. 128. That's. That's that's how you get to uh, 33 straight uh, yeah. players. Well, <laughs> it, it's good knowing that there are wide receivers out there at 128. So when you're sitting there at 120 or 115. You know you might be able to get a wide receiver. There's a chance. Yes? Yeah. There you go. This is why there are a bunch of leagues where receivers value has been hyped to un unforeseen heights in the past. I mean it, it, it's it's insane what people want for a wide receiver, even at age thirty or thirty two. Okay. And people are drafting out of thirty two picks in the first round, ten or fifteen of them are wide receivers sometimes. You, you got to take your shot, or you'll never have one, unless you want to pay a fortune for him. I remember, I forgot what league it was, that everyone just took almost every wide receiver off the board, just throwing darts at at at, at the board, hoping that this wide receiver might turn out. It's kind of one of those. It was That's, that one season. It sounds like an RZB thing. It's happened a couple of times over there. Sure, but but it's I, it's a number of times. There's some 
picks and I you know, a whole bunch of wide receivers go off the board and you're like, uh, I don't know about that one. That one season I have, we had, uh, what was it? 13 or 14 went off the board in the first yeah. round. Remember that? That's, that's where I got like Corey Rose jr. At the, yep, like yep. the 22nd pick, something like that. It was crazy. It was, it yeah. was, a, I think that's when I got Huntley actually might've been. Um, but yes. So yeah. Um, Albie needs well, to get some wide receivers on his team or just go running or get a fullback. That's got good route running. Or tight ends. Yes. That, that's what I focus on. Getting yep, tight ends. I, I like, I like to have a good running back, a good tight end and a good wide receiver. Now Jugs is still in the playoffs. Yes. Yes, he beat Atlanta or not Atlanta, Arizona today. That's right. Hey guys, it was it was a great chatting with you for two and a half hours. I have got to chat. All right, All right. brother. Howie, be good. Yeah. Hey, Brim, a, good luck. Is, yeah, the yeah. Thanks, away. brother. Appreciate yeah, it, Howie. This See you, Bob. This is the last team we're going to go over, um, and then we'll call it here. Oh, okay. No, we gotta go back and we gotta talk about Bob's team as well. Oh, that's he wasn't right. Here. He wasn't here for that. Yes, we gotta talk about your team, Red. So I want to hear all about it. Oh, okay. Yeah, Cornet kind of added. My shot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cornet kind of had a down season, I think. You know, Jugs knew that, and he just couldn't figure it out. And then he, you know, had a great game and finally got you know Burles his uh, not Burles, is it Burles? Yeah, Harrison Burles his wide receiver. Got him a hundred yard game, his second one of the season in the playoffs. So, but then, you know, we talked about it last show too that losing that safety just uh, really hurt him, even though he picked up some other great players. I mean, his defense is just fucking sick. So, but yeah, McConnell getting suspended really was a damper on that. Yeah, that division. Uh fell apart yep it's funny how leagues go right or divisions I meant to say uh, rise and fall yeah because you know I was thinking um, Clay your division is now what mine was back when Jops was good you know what I'm saying we had that three four season stretch where Jops was in the mix all the fucking time and I, I would sit around seven, nine, eight, and eight, you know, and uh, Loyal Royal was, uh, well, he's Jimmy, right? In RZB. Yeah, Jimmy was building up his team and going eight and eight all the time. And then Quick would win a division at 10 and six and shit. So, but your your division is now what we used to be. Yes. Um, and it sucks. <laughs> 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 well, no, dude. I mean, Chicago ain't going away for at least four or five seasons. Melman's not going anywhere ever, probably. So, but you, Just, you gotta you gotta really work on your uh, run defense. Yes, because those guys are both coming for you. Um, that's the fucking okay, Tony. Game. That's the that's the thing, though. They both have stud quarterbacks. So, sure, stop the run, but, you know, it's just like how his offense is kind of set up. Sure, you can stop the run all you want to, and I'm just going to long bomb you. I mean, they're they're going to be impossible to stop for a while, I think. They both got both got stud running or quarterbacks? Yeah, we'll bring them up right now. Yeah, Cody Horner and uh, – I knew Horner was good. I didn't realize Chicago. He's got Tomlinson. Yeah, that's he's, right. he's got Tomlinson. He's had Tomlinson, so it's really kind of exciting. I mean, but look at his passing yards and rating the last few I'm years. Won, you knew this. Yeah. You knew this guy was coming up, man. And now he's got Crane running at full speed with Tomlinson. And then he, you know, for people who wanted to complain about his trade for that wide receiver Bankston, he's got the most out of him, man. Oh, you got to give him yeah, credit. He, I mean, I still don't yeah, like the did. trade. I still think he could have got more. But you have to look at what he's got out of this guy. He has squeezed him like a sponge. Gotten every drop of talent out of that guy he could possibly get. Yeah, that's just give him so, credit there. So, I mean, just think of uh, what he could have been. He's well, I mean, to now. Yeah, so exactly. He got even more out of that trade. 
So yeah. um, I love the competition, but this is what I have to deal with. Yes, and they're all young, and fucking Eichhorst is on his last legs here, you know? <laughs> I mean, Tomlinson's, Tomlinson's 31. He's probably got six seasons left in him. A fucking Cody Hoarder's 27. He's not leaving that team. He's got fucking 10 seasons left in him. I mean, you're dealing. And look at the affinities that fucking Cody Horner has. Jesus Christ. I didn't well, even here, realize Melman had that shit going on. Here's one thing for you, Clay. When uh, Bankston does dry up and go away, and he's going to, there's not another receiver that's going to replace the kind of productivity he's put out. It's not even going to be close. He's going to have to go find somebody else that's at least as good as him. To continue, well, we to, all know he's not to, afraid to put those to kind of points up. Yeah, no, he's not a trade afraid to trade first for wide receivers. So true. And you know, if you trade a first, just one, for a wide receiver, well, that's not the same thing as trading three firsts for some stud player. You just made that trade. Yep. You, there's your first round pick. You didn't draft somebody. You traded for him. Same thing. Yeah. Well, Crane. If he can, if he can continue to take people like Bankston and get that kind of productivity out of them yeah then you got a problem clay that's okay I suppose with crane though since you mentioned him it's a good thing he's coming up on a contract next year and he's got to pay fucking tomlinson and he's going to continue to pay bankston i would believe well those are the people you pay that's my point you go draft everybody else let them yeah. walk let them walk you don't have to sign them you don't have to cut them you don't have to trade them sometimes you're not allowed to trade them let them play their last season and leave as a free agent. It's not the end of the world. Yeah, you just keep your core players that you're building your team around. Can't keep everybody. Yeah, that's what I try to do, too. That's just... 60, $60 million a year safety. That's at some ninth season. Yeah, at some point, gentlemen, I really think I need to get a decent QB and see if I what I can actually do with one. I would be really interested in seeing that myself. I've been watching <laughs> these guys that are just right. Uh, what, what would judges call them? Hot garbage. I mean, yes. <laughs> so why don't you reach out to a team that you think there's nobody clay. I even looked last year. There was really nobody that <clears throat> all the QBs had already been traded that were going to be traded looking around. Right. I didn't have any affinity guys anywhere I could get, but, Look what I did with fucking Hastings. I mean, I for fuck's sake, dude. I know. I, 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 I don't. You know, he ended, you know, the last half of the season was he played like shit, but he wasn't throwing interceptions all the time. Well, let's look yeah. at um, Red Zone's team. Oh, God. Uh, well, we're what up. were we saying, Tony? Let's. I said you're in the playoffs, Grim. Yeah, yeah. fuck. The Hastings. That's insane. Yes. What is he, 29 overall? You got skills, man. Yeah, he's not. I don't even think. I think he's 19 overall, man. Didn't he tank a little bit this season as soon as I got him? If I could get that kind of production out of 19 overall, you'd be. No, he's 20. You're right. He's 29. I was going to say. But what? I've played a 19 before, so I got no shame. I, wow. So, Red Zone, tell us about your team. Well, the thing that hit me really hard at the end of the season is I was looking through the tiebreakers, and if we had beaten Paris, we'd have been in the playoffs. One game. So while you're going along all season, gritting your teeth and pounding your fist, you know, we were a lot closer than I thought we were. Now, Paris put it to us pretty good, 36-20, to 20, and I'm not taking anything away from him, Okay. It was a nice win to put him in the playoffs. But we were that close. So, you know, it's not like when we were 5-11 and 11 last year. You know, I mean, it, it, we did make some progress. I mean, I still don't feel like we have um, a number one wide receiver. Maybe I need to find a Pat Bankston. You know, I, maybe I need to go that route. I don't know. But we need somebody that can step up and be – that number one go-to guy at wide receiver. We don't have that guy. And I thought I drafted him, and it turns out DeWalk was the guy, and I missed him. So, you know, other than that, I mean, it, the two running backs are here. You know, we're, we'll, we'll be looking BPA. 
you know, I don't, I don't see drastic holes anywhere. Most of our team's coming back, but, uh, you know, Burkett came in and did what I wanted this season, which was to run that two headed monster running game and not make mistakes. I think he could do more than that, but we need receivers in order to let him try. Yeah, so, Bob, you had a plus 17 turnover margin. You, I mean, your you know, defense got 31 turnovers. Holy fuck. We need some big play wide receivers. Why don't you just pick up a, a trade with Ben? He's always trading wide receivers. Why is it quiet? No, no. <laughs> I, 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 looked, just got quiet. I looked, okay? And, I mean, it, it, here's what Ben said, and he's exactly right. The player's probably worth more to him because he sees him better. Okay. But he's only worth what you can get for it. So when we're, you know, I, I, I forget the receiver I was trying to get. And I was strained to the point where it's like, okay, you know, maybe I'll trade a first for this guy. And he wanted like a first and a second and maybe more. I'm like, we're miles apart. At some point, you're right. Maybe I just say, fuck it, and just pay whatever I got to pay. I don't know. If you think that player... We decided... We noticed, I noticed, two seasons ago... I don't think it was three. I think it was two seasons ago. I don't know what happened to Fields. But I must not have been paying attention while I kept extending his contract all the time and giving him all that fucking money because he had a route bar that was horrible. I mean, he, he was, when I took the team, he was one of the two or three or four best receivers in the league. And not anymore, not by the time I was sat here long enough, he, he had dropped. <laughs> I mean, it was like, what, what are you paying this guy for? I just, I cut him. Somebody went out and paid him, signed him as a free agent. I said, good luck to you. I, I don't know what kind of numbers he put up, but uh, I can't imagine they were very good. I'll bet you I got as much out of. Um, Where's Arlen? Orlando Capstraw? I'd be surprised if Fields did any better than he did last season. This past season. So you're happy with your team the way it's going right now? I think we're headed in the right direction. I'm, like I said Bob, to why Tony, you, am why I going to roll it? What's that? Why didn't you throw to your tight end more, man? We need to get that in the game. Plan. He's a fucking, he's a stud. I mean, if you're running that two headed running back attack and you're going to be able to do that next year, that tight end's got to fucking play, dude. Yep. He I really does. I mean, he's 24. You got like 76 targets this year, man. Fuck. Need to get him the ball. You're right. What? Yes. I, I think also when you put somebody. That should be your, that should be your primary target. That yep. there. When, you, when you put somebody on the outside that scares people. I think he'll even be more open. Oh, yeah. But I'm not afraid of getting a fucking tight end 150-plus targets, man. Same. Yeah. You want to trade him? Who? You're a tight end. What for? Um, I'll give you a... two seconds. <laughs> two seconds? This two guy seconds. was picked 1.6. One, one no you, way. I'll give you a first for him. Where's your first at? Oh, where am I even picking? Let's probably see. you're probably in the mid. Yeah, I have to be in the mid. I don't know. Talk to me after the draft class comes out. I've never been one that used a tight end that much. That's something I'll have to grow into. But well, you, if you can't figure something out with Clay, I'll come talk to you. I'm um, I'm down. I'm not sure how this plays out, but I'm twenty. Looks like twenty something. I think that's still last year's brother, isn't okay. it? Okay, maybe it is. Or no, is it this year? Yeah, no. nope, nope, this is this year. So right now you're sitting at, oh, yeah, 20. See, a, a lot of people, and I, I'll, I'll use one guy as an example. He's a guy I talk to all the time. He lives in Texas. His name's Flex D. And he is dead yep. set. He doesn't want to trade. He's not looking to trade. The only way he's going to make a trade is if it makes his team better. So unless you're willing to overpay, you're probably not going to make very many deals with him. I'll bet you in – four or five different leagues over a whole season for each one, you know, four or five whole seasons. Um, he might make two trades a year. If that. 
There's probably years he doesn't make any. And he doesn't want to sit down and negotiate. He doesn't want to find a way to make it work. See, I do. If somebody calls and says, hey, Bob, I want this guy. Unless I'm glued to him, okay, unless we're attached at the hip, I'm looking. Is there a way to make this deal work? Is there a way that he can get what he wants and I can get something I want? I'm looking. Well, and, and, you know, if you want that tight end, if, you know, I, I signed Burkett to a five year deal, I don't think I can deal him right now. And I'm pretty happy with him, so I probably wouldn't. I mean, yeah, I was going to ask few people if you're satisfied with him this year. On my team. But there's very few people on my team that I wouldn't trade in the right scenario. Where can we find that right scenario or not? Stock. Uh, yeah. A lot I, of people you send a PM. No, I'm not interested in trading him. We talked okay. about this. Well, that's the end of that conversation. By the way, we talked Even about this. Even before first round picks, you're not? <laughs> yes, we talked about this before. So, I mean, that, that um, and I think we did it with their Saturday afternoon thing with the guys from overseas where you okay. throw an offer out, okay. but there's no, that no, pick does, that doesn't work for me. However, if you offer me this, I'll take that, you know, some place so you know what you're playing with. Unless you're flat out saying this guy is non-negotiable. I'm not trading this guy at all. Uh, but there's no give and take. Like you just said, Red Zone, you reach out to somebody and they just shut you down. Is it because of they didn't like your offer, but the player is still available to be traded? And if that's the case, they should come back to you, Red Zone, and say, I don't want your first. I'll take two seconds. And that will get the deal done. What's his name? White from um, uh, Paris did that with me with the quarterback, Ike. I offered two firsts. He says, no, give me three firsts and he's yours. And I said, you got it. Well, CV. I'll tell you what, pull up, pull up Toronto. CV, you here? They're I, roster I am. Can you hear me? Hey, Derek, what's up, man? Wow. Holy I whole... shit. I know. Well, it's been a long time. It has, brother. It has. It's been a long time. <laughs> Welcome. Yeah, I like how you're having these well, things. Hey, Clay, like... pull up Toronto's oh, roster night. page. I got it right here. And pull up Todd Schweiger. Who? The Todd receiver. Schweiger. Schweiger. Got it. Okay, now if he's where is he? He's a seventy nine oh, rating. Yeah. Oh, it's not coming up on your um screen. There he comes. I, okay. I see him. It took some time. It, I was gonna it's say showing up now. Okay. So if he's on my team and you and you send me a PM, hey Bob, what do you want for him? That guy's not available. Okay. Great. Be right back. You can't have him. Anybody else, I think I'd be willing to look at. That's that's an example of what I'm saying. There's yeah, a player not- that I'm not, no, I'm not I'm not sure just flat out out. to get somebody like that. Now we were talking about negotiating for trades and whether or not how far you're willing to go to find a way to make a deal. You're not willing to go any length of distance to find a way to trade him. You're just not going to do it. No. My tight end, on the other hand, we could talk. Well, let's let's back up on this. Let's say your team is completely shit. It's okay. the only player in your team that has value. And you want to get your team going again. Would you trade him to jumpstart your team? No. Schweiger? If no. Because if you, team, all you need is a QB to get him the ball and another wide receiver, and you can throw the ball a 1,000 times or 800 times a season and score a bunch of points and win games. Okay, how about you, CB? Yeah, if, if your team's complete shit, there's more than likely you don't have a player of this caliber on your team. True. And you're probably looking for a player of the caliber if your team is complete shit. If you trade him, the best you can do is hopefully run across somebody just as good. I don't see the point in letting him go. That's best. Yeah, that's best case scenario too. <laughs> Ains. Yeah. As far as I'm concerned, he is the team. Yeah. This guy. Okay. 
I agree with you guys, by the way. He's 25 years old. He is yeah. the team. Absolutely. Now, if he was 30 or 28, wow, it's different. But he's not. And there's where you find those teams, Red Zone, that they have a guy that's 30 years old or 29, similar bars, maybe slightly less, that you pay to get that player on your team. You're right, that player Clay. is no good to them. I may have to uh, expand my uh, what's the criteria. <laughs> Maybe loosen it up just a hair. I don't know. You're, you're right, though. Since that we have you, it takes. since we have you on CV, um, you made a comment in the in in the forum. You're driving a Ferrari that you're afraid to crash. Yep, I love that comment. <laughs> that was funny as hell. Yeah, I'm just trying not to fuck it up, man. <laughs> we were talking early. We started with your division. And you put up 38 points per game, ranked number one. Your defense only allowed 22 points, ranked number nine. You put up 608 points on the season. 608 points. That's crazy. Tell us. <laughs> I didn't do nothing. <laughs> I just inherited a really good team that's already there. And I just luckily Tzak was around for the first couple of weeks, so I was able to piece together his game plan through the logs. And then on defense I'm just running something generic. Other than that, there's not much else going on. We had a question. You're going to get pick 1-1. One, one. <laughs> okay. Here's your quarterback, Mock, who put up 62 touchdowns. We said, would CV pick and choose a generation quarterback in the draft at 1-1, one, one, or would he trade it away and stay with Mock and ride it out? And that was a question we all pose earlier today you'll hear it later when way when i load the the video up but we have you here would you trade away one one for a boatload of picks and just run back with mock if there was a general rate generational quarterback there i say you would pick the generational quarterback let mock you play out his let mock play out his contract or trade him but i wouldn't trade him i let him ride one more season and just let him fucking out the door because you'll never too. be picking at 1-1 one, one again. Yep. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to make it a little harder. That's too easy. <laughs> it is. A 55-rated quarterback is on the board. At 1-1? One, one? Yes. No. Well, you don't even know, though. No, everyone else, it's all defensive players. Mock's um, going to play so, at least so, two more years. So do you say, you know what, I'll ride with Mock? I think this is um, jokes. See, I, hey, that's where you go back. Look at Mock. That's where you go back to what Tony was saying with the two-minute offense. You think and that's probably gone down over the last couple of He's not winning seasons. games in the last two minutes. No, he's, he's not. But 600 points. I know that, but I wonder if that <laughs> is an indicator of something more than people fucking think it is. <laughs> now it's got me fucking thinking. Stoney's still here? Yeah. Oh, okay. Hmm. You saw that in your single play game, Tony, yes? Yeah. Yeah, I always hate to go up against a quarterback that has that high of a two-minute offense. Because he comes back and beats you in the last two minutes of the game. Yeah, you can do everything right and still yeah. lose the game. Well, that isn't, you think yeah. about it, though, because how many times is Toronto – we'd have to look at logs and shit, but how many times were they in the two-minute offense at the half and fucking screamed down and got a touchdown right before the half? That'd be – hmm. Now I'm well, looking, now he's I'm only going to be in hurry up when he's behind. How many times is he behind? You're going to be in hurry yeah, Two minute, two minute offense is two-minute <laughs> offense, Bob. You switch to that bar – when you have two minutes left at the before the second half and before the end of the game. Well, if you're winning thirty to seven at halftime, you're not a two minute offense. Well, I mean, well, I suppose you've won thirty to seven at halftime a bunch of times. 
But w- whatever. I think you still switch to that in the, any two-minute situation, whether in the first half or the second half. I know I know for the a fact that – base offense is his two-minute offense. <laughs> uh, yeah. that may, there's where it might be affecting the game. How do you get that to match up? I know for a fact that the, the game plan doesn't use your two-minute plays until – the end of the game like if you're losing in the last two minutes they start using your plays in the two minute play sheet okay otherwise you know for, the the you know for a fact how do you know that for a fact because i uh in the other league ifl i'm in i recorded i recorded all my plays and situations and i never found a play that was in my two minute at the end of a half it was right. either they're using i get they're using like first First and ten, first and second and ten, a lot. All right, so would that then make you not have that many plays in your two minute offense? Yeah, I only had like six. See, yeah, shit, and I've got way. T- yep, I got way too many up there. Then I didn't even realize that. I thought those were being played at the end of the second half as well. There's no reason for too, me to have I- fucking. There's no reason for me to have fucking 12 plays up in there. Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> How many did you have? <laughs> I, think I, got, I think I got 12. Well, Maybe eight, 10. Eight most. Eight's the most I've ever had in one full season in the IFL. Hmm. God damn it. See, now I got And I had a pretty it. terrible team, too. Now I got to check that out because I bet you it's worse than I even suspect. And, um,. I know that it doesn't always use your red zone first and ten plays too. Yep, you're right. That, that that's kind of sporadic. As, as often as people think. Someone yeah. else told me that recently. Especially if the first play is like a deeper pass. I've noticed that. Well, like sevens and eights, it won't hardly ever use those. If you have them slotted in at your first and ten mm-hmm. in red zone. Really? No, I think I'm. I thought I was using my red zone plays. These are good for the logs to find out. Yeah. No, see, no. Fucking Derek has to come out here and make me fucking question everything all of a sudden again. <laughs> well. No, I mean, you know, I'm a log looker. I look to see what's going on, but I did not realize, like, it, the one that's blowing my mind is the two-minute offense, of, you know, before the half. None of those plays are used. Now I have to fucking log into my shit and see how many plays I have there. <sighs> and now you got to fix it for your playoff game tomorrow. Oh, I'm getting stomped. Yeah, we'll have to call the playoff games before we leave, too. Yes, we do. Um, so, CV, you're going to hold that 1-1 one, one and make the pick. Most likely. Yeah, most likely. And if there's no QB, you take another receiver because you've got Warzella and George getting old. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yep. Well, it's one or the other. He's gonna if have, neither one of them is there, then maybe you're looking to deal it. He's going to have but, a generation wide receiver sitting right there. Yep. Yeah, and I can, I can tell you this right now. If Derek had not taken over Toronto, they might have fucking – like. well, they still probably would have won the division, but not like this. I mean – Derek's always been a fucking passing team and he's always been really good at fucking passing. And that's why this worked out. It's like fucking, he just had like heaven dropped right into his lap for a fucking team. Well, I'm pretty sure Tzak would have done just as well. Well, yes, no, <laughs> Tzak, no, I'm just saying if any other GM had taken over oh, other than oh, Derek, I see. I see what you because mean. Derek is a passing guy. He could figure out how to keep making this work and do that fucking well. Like I said, another GM takes over the team, probably still win the division, but they ain't going fourteen and two. And you know, you know, you know what I'm saying. I do. Oh, great season, CV. Yeah, I didn't do much. <laughs> no, didn't have to do much. This is true. All right, guys, you want to talk about the playoffs tomorrow? Let's do that. Let's get it up. We have first game, Arizona going to Oakland, playing Jugs. Man. Who's healthy, who's not? Okay, let's take a look. Let's go to Arizona first. No, they already played. 
You got to click next week, brother. They did? Oh, that's right. Yeah, go click next week. Yeah, we can uh, look up the preview. Out. Okay, yep. Mass Lewis at Toronto. Click the preview. Let's see what's going on. Yeah, I'm thinking we stuck in a time warp or something. <laughs> yeah. what? No, what? What? I'm no like, one, wait, he's no got to play again. He's like, God damn it, I have to I beat him again. Say something. <laughs> you said like like 10 minutes later. <laughs> that was, that was Chuck. You were like, damn it, I have to beat yeah. him again, really? 10 uh, minutes is like 10 seconds to Clay. All right, let's see here. Mass Luis. So Mass Luis is playing CV. And he doesn't have Ronaldo. Wilson. And he doesn't have Ronaldo. Or his tight end. Or his tight end. So, yeah. I, I This is, yeah. This is Toronto all day. Yeah. I'm going to say Toronto. Yeah, give a score. Yeah. Toronto 38 to 20, 21. Okay. Um, red zone. Who is Mass Luis going to play? Al Schneider at QB, let me see. Eh, you know what? That doesn't look terrible. Um, I'll say Toronto 44 to 30. Ooh, high score, huh? No. Toronto's going to just put points up forever. Haynes? I don't care who they play. You want to beat them, you're going to have to outscore them. What do you think, Haynes? Mass Lewis uh, going to Toronto. Yeah, I got Toronto on this one. Mass Lewis has got uh, his best players injured. What do you got for the score? I'm going to say Toronto 34. Mass loose, 24. Okay. Jugs? I believe for a second. Yeah, what I uh, Toronto, <laughs> Mass Lewis. <laughs> mm. Toronto. So call in the game. What's the score? Uh, I'll probably like 38 23 or something. All right, so you're saying 38-23 for CV saying that. And Jugs, I don't know where he disappeared to. I'm going to call Toronto 42 and Mass Lewis. He will score, I think, 10 points. Wow. Blowout. They're yelling at me for 40 to 30. You go 42 to 10. Yes, I think it's going to be. Toronto Toronto 41, Mass Lewis 20. Oh, another big scorer. All right, next up is Oakland going to Frederick. CV, you want to take this one? Uh, probably Oakland, like 28 to 24 or something. Grim? Oh, man. It's a tough game yeah. to call. It is Frederick's just because quarterback throws a lot of interceptions. Yeah, that's that's the problem I'm having. Does Bad Basky show up, or or is it just fucking hate man? You just got well. See, and then Jugs just fucking switched his shit up and fucking beat Arizona today too. So, dude, that's I almost fucking feel like this is gonna be a low scoring game. Man, I would call <sighs> so tough. Man, I'm gonna I'm gonna take fucking jugs at a twenty four to twenty one. Field goal late in the fourth to win it. Okay. I mean the the weather's good, twenty eight degrees, two mile an hour wind. Red zone? Oakland, Frederick. Sorry that took so long. I just took a look at the injuries. Oakland only has one player injured at the defensive end. Everybody else is healthy. I've, I've not seen him in the playoffs without 
massive multiple injuries in the defensive backfield or his QB out or I mean he's at full strength practice. Um I'll go thirty one thirty. Oakland. He's a high scoring game, huh? Mm. Haynes. Yeah, I think it's gonna be high scoring also. I think it's going to be the best game tomorrow. Uh, Frederick's going to get out to a quick lead. Dominate the first half. And then Oakland's going to come back in the second half. Tie it up. 30 to 30. And then kick a field goal to win. 33 to 30. Oh, shit. OT. That's a good game. I am going with Oakland and taking it at 21 to 17. Jugs. Why the hell is everybody picking me? (laughs) Well, because of what you did to Arizona today. Melman was supposed to come in and fucking win that game. And I probably would have predicted Arizona to win that game had we done the show last night. You don't we, want to be jinxed. We, that's yeah, that. that's that, that's what we're doing. We're jinxing you. Yeah. I just don't understand why everybody, <laughs> everybody picked me. I'm picking Frederick. Now what? Okay, now, that's fine. Okay, what's the score? We want to know that because some I'm picking, people. I'm picking. I'm picking Frederick, thirty-one to twenty-three. Okay. All right. Fair enough. I don't think we're going to score enough. I think I need a. A red zone interception, a pick six, maybe a fumble recovery in order to stop him from scoring. I don't know if that's going to happen. Yeah, but again, you, you just beat Arizona by switching up your game plan. This, this, well, that's this called, one looks right. That's called game plan. Well, yeah, but this looks like it's going to work. That's why I picked you twenty-one to seventeen. Yeah, I it's picked gonna a low be, score too. It's, it's going to be fourteen points you're going to have. And you're going to do a pick six, Jugs. And that's going to give you the 21 points. Although I really hope it's kind of like Tony's scenario because that would be a great game to watch in Solovision. <laughs> yep. No. How, how many times did he score less than 20 points this year? Who? Well, Frederick? Frederick. It's Almost not, never? It, it's not about that. It's about the playoffs get reset. That's why I won. I should not have beat Owie. Everybody fucking knows that. No, you got a good defense, though. So we got Orlando. Okay, so the one one time, one time, Clay was the game. He held Frederick to 20 and got 24. Nope, 17. Texas held held him to 17. Howie Howie held him to 17, so twice. And And Harlem held him to 17. Okay. Yeah, for some reason, I can slow him down. APFL here, you know, I don't win them all because I don't score even as much as he does. Like he beat me seventeen to six here this year, but I beat him twice in APFL. Twenty four points he scored both games. Orlando at Tucker. Jugs, I'll give you this one. Uh, you, brother. We're gonna say Tucker. Yeah, Tucker thirty. Orlando twenty-four. Grim. But oh, yeah, Tucker's winning. Um, yeah, Double T's got his defense fucking working hard, dude. This last half of the season. Something in my heart tells me I want to take Orlando on this one, but I'm not going to. I'm taking Tucker. uh, I think he has trouble scoring, man. So Tucker 30. And Talon's might struggle off at 17. 30 17, Tucker. Haynes. This is a tough one. Um, 
I think Tucker's going to score a decent amount of points. Say 32. Orlando. 24. Red zone. I think uh, there may be a little bit more to Orlando than we have generally given him credit for. I think he can steal one from Ben. I'm going to say 30 to 27, maybe in overtime. I'm going to go with red zone on this. I think Orlando takes this one. 28-24. 28-24. Oh, man. See, that's what, again, it, Tucker has been shut out of the bowl for so long. At some point, they got to get there. That's why I put, I, I still had, a, I, I called Tucker, but I still have a feeling Orlando can pull off something fucking cool. Now we have you, Grim, going up <laughs> at Chicago. Um, CV, I forgot to ask you, uh, Tucker or Orlando? Mm, hopefully Orlando. Hopefully, Tucker. <laughs> okay, so who wins and what's the score, brother? Probably like Tucker, like 40 to 20. I can just see Tucker dominating like they have all season. All right, then we're going to keep you back on this. I want you to call the Williamsburg against Chicago. So Williamsburg mm, is going to Chicago. Probably Chicago by 40. By 40. 40. <laughs> I'm kidding. Dude, I, I'm thinking they're going to put up 40, but I was hoping to get at least like a touchdown, maybe a 40 to 10. Well, uh, by 40 means it's probably a 50 burger. It's 50 to 10? Yeah. 40? My, def- my defense has played okay the last. Grim, I well, thought you said this guy was your friend. So, CV, it, it, the score is 50 to, to 10, yes? <laughs> yeah, Derek's my friend. Not my no, real something. friend, but. Okay, probably 50. more like twenty-four to seventeen. I think I can hold them to twenty-four, brother. You want to up that a little bit? No, no, you can do it. All right, Haynes, <laughs> what do you say? Sorry, Graham. Think, go, uh, go for it, brother. I think uh, what was his name? Crane and Tomlinson. I think they're just going to be too much. And I don't think uh, Hastings can keep up on the offensive side. So I'm going to say Chicago 36, Williamsburg 21. All right, sweet. Got me 21. Jugs, what do you give? Williamsburg or Chicago? Uh, Chicago 44. What? 44 14? 44-16. 44-16. What, do I get a safety? <laughs> <laughs> no, you get a touchdown and three field goals. <laughs> oh. Um, red zone. Well, I, I'm going to make a comparison here that Jugs is going to absolutely – Feel my pain because he lives in Pittsburgh too. And uh, this is the Steelers. You can take a quarterback like Hastings and play good defense and run the ball and maybe get into the playoffs. But when you get into the playoffs, you're going to start finding teams and quarterbacks like Tomlinson. And you're going to lose to those teams because they have quarterbacks like Tomlinson, which is why you need to go get yourself a real quarterback. Um, I'm going to say Chicago 27 to 7. Can you imagine me with a good quarterback? That's, That's what I would years. like to see. Please do it. I can, like to watch. Can you imagine you with a good quarterback? <laughs> yes, no, he, he I can. We can't because That's why he hasn't well, done I, it. Because I haven't had one in so fucking long. I'm but if I had a great quarterback, even with my middling receivers right now, who all have great route running, and I can make them work and shit. But God, I can't even imagine. I'm gonna go. Hey, I know the guy that has the one one. Well, I'm not trading up for that. <laughs> I'm not just a wide receiver away from winning. I'm a quarterback. Oh, yeah, but I, I couldn't make mock work. 
I'm going to go, go ahead. Chicago, 30. Uh, Grim, your team, 10. Ah, damn it. Well, at least I got a couple over 20s. That, I'm going to call... I think I can hold him a 30 and then maybe get. You think you can hold him to 30. That's yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I ain't getting over 30 points. So I'm thinking I can hold him to 30 this time. And then his defense going to smite me and I'll get three field goals. 30 to nine is my goal. Damn. All right. Bo, gentlemen, thank you for getting on. It's been fun. And Always we'll- absolute pleasure. Always better when you have fucking extra people. Fucking Tony, love that you came on again, brother. That's awesome. Derek, I'm glad you're fucking here. Good talking to you guys. I'm glad fucking Jugs fucking made it, even though he's driving around to cities. Absolutely. Good shit. Good shit, gentlemen. All right, fellas. I'll end it here. If I can end it. Recording has stopped. Is that you? No, that was me. (laughs) That was me. You haven't stopped recording yet. There was a weird thing, Bob, in the beginning where he's like, accidentally hit record and his bitch comes on you have started recording and then we all had an option to like i don't want to be recorded i'm leaving <laughs> yeah, it's really I, weird let me stop it here <laughs>